Week four of high school football is here, and praise God, it's not raining outside. We're, play, we're playing football on a Friday night in southeast Missouri. Good evening, and welcome into the G98 game of the week from the Dragons Lair in St. Genevieve. It's the St. Gen Dragons at 2-1, and one, hosting the 3-0 and o Potosi Trojans, and I think we're going to be in for a nice battle tonight at the uh, Dragons Lair, like you like to call it, Dennis. Yeah, they're going to rename the stadium after we keep calling it the Dragons Lair, but I tell you what, we're in for a good one tonight. This Potosi team's coming in hot with 3-0 and o record. But I'll tell you what, don't let the 2-1 and one record of this St. Genevieve Dragons team fool you. When they're at home, they're a tough team to play against. Yeah, they're tough all the time, but when they're at home, you're right. It's, uh, it's very hard to come in here with this charged-up crowd, this community that loves football so much. It's hard to come in and beat them. But you know what? Potosi has beaten three teams this year, 3-0, and and really have had some pretty uh, large – uh, margins of victory as well. They beat P Perryville 30-14 to 14 last week. Perryville's have been a lot better this year. Week one, they had a 55-7 to 7 win over Confluence Prep. And they also had a 12-6 to 6 win over Pacific mixed in there too. So this Potosi team, we know they're improved from last year. They were only 2-8 and eight a year ago. We know they're better, but how much better are they? Tonight, we're going to find out. We're back with the J98 Game of the Week just in time for the opening kickoff, which is brought to you by American Family Insurance agent Bill Bass and Park Hills committed to making the big play for their customers. Potosi won the toss, but they deferred, so St. Genevieve will be receiving to start this ball game off, and it's going to be Adam Schwint and Clayton Nager back to return. Lane Merciel is the kicker as Potosi in their white uniforms on will be kicking on left to right as you look on from the press box. It's a squib kick and a fielded by one of the up men at the 47-yard line and brought down immediately. Big number 73, Luke Himmerla, fields the kick. St. Genevieve, good starting field position. Potosi there trying for the uh, surprise onside, Dennis. Yeah, they were trying to go with the surprise onside there and the, the big number 73 with the good hands to start this game off. He even tried to run with the ball that time. Coach Stolzer talked about some key injuries on St. Jim's side. No Jacob Rowe, a talented receiver and defensive back, and no Tyson Roth, talented safety as well for St. Genevieve. How much of a factor do you think that might be for St. Jet? It's going to be pretty big. Yeah, I mean, both of them are key players, and, and you, know, you don't want to be without them. Well, St. Genevieve starting in their power run formation. The first play from scrimmage is a handoff straight up the middle and going nowhere on the carry is Gabe Meyer. And that's how we get this one started. And we'll get you the starting lineups as well. So Gabe Meyer runs for about a yard on the first play from scrimmage. Starting lineups for St. Genevieve. We'll start with the quarterback, Matt Drury. He is a junior. We'll get you the rest here in just a bit. Counter play, and they'll hand it off to Brendan Dallas this time. After faking it to Meyer, Brendan Dallas loses a yard on the run and goes back for third and 10 coming up. Number 53, Dallas Seam from his nose tackle position on that stop. He had good penetration in that backfield that on that play. Starting lineups brought to you by Midwest Convenient Care. So we told you about Gabe Meyer. He's got three touchdowns on the year. Brendan Dallas also three touchdowns. Those are the running backs. Adam Schwint and George Stiegel at wide receiver. And here's Potosi coming across. And it's probably going to be a five-yard penalty against the Trojans unless they rule St. Genevieve it drew him off on this one. It's on the defense. Encroachment on Potosi. Five yards for St. Gen. That'll give them... Field position across the 50 on Potosi's side of the field to about the 47-yard line. Let's run down the offensive line for St. Jen. Clayton Gilo at tight end. He is a 6'2", 200-pound senior. At left tackle, Devin Brown. At left guard, it is Dan Tarana, the tarantula. Here is a fake handoff as the quarterback, Drury, is going to take it up himself up the middle for about four yards on the carry. It's going to be full down and very short. That penalty is going to come up huge here because St. Genevieve could really go for it on fourth down and one. Looks like no hesitation. They're going to do it. Matt Drury picks up four so far. Four yards total rushing for the St. Gen Dragons. It's fourth down and one. The center is Kellen Stiegel for St. Genevieve. Right guard Kyle Nicholson at 5'9", 266. And the right tackle is number 73, Luke Hemmerla at 6'2", 223. Here's Drury on the keeper again. He stopped in the... Possession for the Potosi defense. Once again, number 53, Dallas Seam with the stop. Come through and just completely blew that play up in the backfield. Yeah, the Potosi defense and uh, Dallas Syme is the uh, Potosi Trojan defensive lineman that made that stop. Turnover on downs, first down and 10, along with Dakota Glor. Syme's the D tackle, Dennis Booker, Daniel Reed, and Rick Roush along that Potosi defensive line. So now we'll see Potosi on offense for the first time as they start at about the 45-yard line. Here's a handoff left side. It's going to be Dusty Weidman picking up about three yards off tackle to the left. 
you know, it was the first series for this St. Genevieve team, but you have to give it to the uh, defensive lineman for Potosi on that one. They definitely won the battle up front. Second down coming up and about seven yards as Vincent or Weidman rather picks up three yards on the first carry. Let's get you that Potosi starting a lineup. Aaron Benson is the junior quarterback, six touchdowns, two interceptions this year, number 18. And Dusty Weidman is the tailback, a senior with four touchdowns on the ground. And Caleb Stevens is the fullback. Here's another run. The left side again. That'll pick up a nice little chunky yard. It's about three or four yards. And that'll make it third down and short to manageable here for the Potosi Trojans. Weidman on the second carry there. Give him three yards. Third down and about four to five now for Potosi as the ball is spotted at midfield. Dakota Glore is the senior wide receiver. Austin Cooley is the sophomore wide receiver, number 32, as Potosi splits four wide out here, trying to spread out St. Jen's defense. Dakota Glore is going to go in motion before the play. We've got a flag. And it is a legal procedure on Potosi backing him up five yards. So now as they're looking at third down and nine or ten here on this next play, a crucial one on their first possession. Let's get to that offensive line, which is, again, brought to you by Midwest Convenient Care. Dalton Syme is the tight end, number 36, the senior. Daniel Reed at left tackle. Dennis Booker at left guard. Dallas Syme is the center. John Malugin, the right guard. And Zach Drennan is at right tackle for Potosi. All right, so here we go. Third down and 10 from the 45-yard line. From the shotgun, it's Vincent. He's going to try a quick hitter out here. It is his receiver who breaks a tackle to the 50, and he's up to the 40 to the 30-yard line, trying to cut it back inside, and he does. He's all the way up to the 20-yard line, inside the 20 to the 17. Austin Cooley on the catch. He's the sophomore, and a big first down on third down and nine, moving the chains and getting it up in the red zone. It's a nice play there by the Potosi Trojan team. That wide receiver just looking downfield, making sure of where his blocks are at, cutting to the inside, back to the outside for a nice game. 38 yards to Cooley there on just a little quick heater, quick hitter. First down and 10 from the 17, 8 minutes and 43 seconds to go in the first quarter. So Potosi back to the line with the purple pants and the white jerseys. They'll split three receivers out left and one receiver to the right. Weidman's the back in the backfield. He is to... Vincent's right. Weidman gets the carry on a delayed handoff. He's trying to get the edge, and he's not going to get it. He can just fight for some yardage now. He's going to lose at least two yards on this one as he's brought down back at the 19-yard line, plus a flag came in late. It was a good thing that this Potosi team didn't really get to see the defensive set because there was a wide receiver for Potosi on the far side completely uncovered. So a legal block in the back goes against Potosi on that one, wipes out a negative run anyway, but St. Genevieve likely going to accept it and back him up further. That's the discussion right now. While they talk about that, let's get to the St. Jen starting defense. Johnny Williams, the one who just made that tackle. Number 89 at DN, 6'2", 200-pound senior. Dan Tarana, the tarantula at D-tackle, 6'6", 270 pounds, number 59. The other D-tackle, Zach Jamerson at 6'1", 220. And the DN, Devin Brown at 6'1", 200 pounds. Linebackers are Ryan Carl, Gabe Meyer, Clayton Gilo, and Steve Wilson. Defensive backs, Adam Schwent, Brendan Dallas, and Clayton Nager. No Jacob Rowe, no Tyson Roth today. Potosi rolling out the pass with Benton. He's just going to chuck it up for a jump ball in the end zone. The pass is caught. Touchdown, Potosi. The jump ball is won by the Trojans. Austin Cooley has made two huge catches on this drive. That one goes for a touchdown from the 35-yard line, a 35-yard strike. Potosi's on the board first. Cooley just completely took that ball away from number nine, Clayton Nager. For that score, what a play by that wide receiver. Austin Cooley has two touchdown or two catches today, one for 38 yards, one for 35 yards. That one goes for a touchdown. Vincent throws a seventh of the year. It's 6-0 Potosi, and the Trojans making a statement in this opening quarter. Here's the snap for the extra point. It's up in Merciel. It's going to put it through. It's good. 7 to nothing. Potosi Trojans over the St. Jen Dragons with 8-11 to go in the first quarter. Potosi turn on some heads. We're back in one minute on J98. Are you one of these kinds of dads? When the kids came along, did you promise yourself, I never want to look back and wish I'd spent less time at the office? Then you should get to know Shelter Insurance. We help people who plan their lives around their families by offering life insurance that protects soccer daughters, shortstops, violinists, good students, wives, and so much more. To find out more, visit our website, shelterinsurance.com. Seek shelter today. For all your insurance needs, see Jim Ropke, your shelter insurance agent in St. Genevieve. The opportunity is right here. 
You can have it all for less. You can be what you want to be. So come on, take that first step. Potosi is going to try that onside kick again, this time again recovered by St. Genevieve as it was bobbled around there a little bit. Steve Wilson, though, finally falls on it. St. Genevieve will start at their 44-yard line. So Potosi goes 55 yards on that first possession, gets a big touchdown pass to a sophomore, Cooley. Potosi leads at 7-0. Their passing game looked very impressive in that first drive. So St. Genevieve is back on offense now, and they'll go to the two-back Offense behind the quarterback under center. Meyer fakes it to the first man through, hands it off to Brendan Dallas. Dallas is going to get a couple yards to the left side, near side, and then be brought down by a host of Potosi tacklers. Brendan Dallas, that's his first positive carry. He went for negative one yard on his last one. He's going to get three. So he's got two carries, two yards, second down, and seven to go from the 47-yard line. St. Genevieve again. Two backs in the backfield. Drury's going to come up under center. One receiver, it's Schwent. Rolling out to pass on a play action is Drury. Underthrows his man, but hits Gabe Meyer. Gabe Meyer reeks back for it. He's across the 40-yard line. Inside the 40, it's a first down. They'll call him down at the 39-yard line. Oh, what a nice pass by Drury there. He threaded the needle. Got to pass that defender. Picked up a nice, nice gain on that play. 14-yard reception for Meyer out of the backfield. Faked it to him, then went to him on the pass. Seven and a half left to go in the first quarter. First and ten from the Potosi 39. St. Genevieve goes back to work. Jury working under center. It's Meyer and Dallas in the backfield again with split backs. Here's the handoff and Meyer hits the hole hard and fast and gets a nice six to seven yard carry off left tackle and gets it up to the 34 yard line they'll call it. So give him about five yards. Gabe Meyer two carries six yards on the day. 34 yard line is where they'll spot it. Jury back under center. He'll go. Dallas, the back on the near side. Meyer, the back on the far side with the split backs in the backfield. Schwent is the wide receiver out left. They're going to hit him on a quick curl. He's got it at the 30-yard line and gets it up to about the 28-yard line. Think he needed the 29. This should be good for a first down. If not, it'll be right there close. That's Adam. a pretty favorable spot there, Glenn. I think he real close, maybe to buy the point of the ball. Adam Schwent just on that quick curl round gets the catch. His first of probably many today, unless Potosi can shut him out of this ball game. That's a five-yard pass and catch from Jury to Schwent. They will move the chains. First down and 10 at the 29-yard line. Now Jury under center, hands it off to Dallas. A nice holder run through. He's got the 20-yard line. Sprinting to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Brendan Dallas. What a run and what a hole that opened up for him. 29 yards to promised land. What a cutback move by Brendan Dallas. Way to keep his eyes up and looking down the field to make that cutback to the outside to get it in the end zone. That was uh, about a 53-yard drive for St. Genevieve, and they made short work of it. 7-6, to six, the score. St. Gen trying to tie this ball game up. Clayton Neger is the extra point specialist here. He'll look to knock one through. Brendan Dallas with a 29-yard run. Matt Drury is the holder. They line him up to make it 7-7 with 6.41 to go in the first quarter. Nager puts it up and puts it through. It's good. 7-7. We're all tied in St. Genevieve. An exciting first quarter with 6.41 to play in the opening frame. We're back in one minute on J98. Where you always get a sweet deal. Get 0% APR up to 60 months on select 2012 models or rebates up to and exceeding $7,000 right now at Ruther Ford at the Herculaneum exit. Hi, this is Doug Jr. with Jefferson County's best lineup of new Fords and certified pre-owned. Hey, where you always get a sweet deal. Ruther Ford. Ruther.com. Right now at Ruther Ford, we have a new stable of 2013 Mustangs, plus new 2013 Escapes, and the new 2013 Fusions are on the way. Plus, just in at Ruther Ford is the new 2013 Focus ST with the all-new 2-liter EcoBoost engine. Plus, our recent summer savings produced a terrific selection of pre-owned vehicles as well. Remember, Ruther Ford is proud to be tops in the region in customer satisfaction. We are Ruther Ford, I-55 at the Herculaneum Auto Mall exit. Ruther Ford, Ruther.com. 
Well, St. Genevieve was stopped on their first possession. Potosi goes down and scores on a 55-yard drive, capped off by a 32-yard touchdown pass to Cooley. Made it 7-0. St. Gen answers back with a 53-yard drive, capped off by a 29-yard run by Brendan Dallas, and we've got a 7-7 tie, and Potosi has the ball go off their hands at the 12-yard line on this kickoff return and out of bounds. Then the flag came out for a legal procedure against the defense, but Potosi touched that ball first, so it should just be the ball spotted about the 12-yard line and not a legal procedure on St. Gen here. That was a nice kickoff by the young man from St. Genevieve. Cody Riggs was the kick returner who had it go off of his hands, then out of bounds. The official nearest the play through the flag for the illegal procedure kicking the ball out of bounds. But since that touched Potosi, that shouldn't be the case, and they get it right to the applause of the St. Jen crowd. They'll spot it at the 11-yard line. Potosi's backed up to start their second drive, but they move the ball effectively on that first drive. We are dealing with real officials, and they are not replacement officials. That's always a good thing. How do you think they're doing, by the way? They're doing a fine job. Man in motion, it's Dusty Weidman. He'll get the carry after the shotgun snap goes to Vince, and then Weidman gets up across the 15 to about the 16-yard line for a five-yard carry for the tailback. This is a kid that's going to get at least 30 carries in this game, I would guess. At least that's what Potosi hopes if they're in the ball game that long to where they can keep running the football. He's got three carries for 11 yards so far in this one. That was his longest run, a five-yard dash. Second down and five from the 16-yard line. Vincent working from the shotgun. They'll have three receivers out left and one to the right. And here's the snap. And I said from the shotgun, he was actually under center there with one back in the backfield. Hand off to that back, Weidman, and he goes nowhere on the carry. We've got third down and five coming up for the Potosi Trojans. Cooley has been the split wide receiver out to the right. Dakota Glore has been split up wide left most plays so far in this one. And again, they'll bring Cooley out to the right. Dakota Glore is out left. Vincent's going to come up under center with Weidman in the backfield. A two tight end set for the Potosi Trojans. Third down, five yards to go. Here's the snap, and they'll pitch it out to Weidman. Weidman trying to get the edge, breaks a tackle from Gabe Meyer, spins off another, but he's only going to get about two yards. He's going to be short of the first down. St. Genevieve's defense does a good job holding. We should see a punt from Potosi. And if Potosi punts, they're punting from deep in their own end. Should give St. Genevieve good field position. Two-yard carry there for Weidman, but not enough. Fourth down and three coming up. St. Genevieve has the punt return unit out there. And Potosi is going to punt this one away. Dakota Glore is the Potosi punter. Brenda Dallas is back to return. He's set up camp at midfield about the 49-yard line. So Dakota Glore gets the snap. He's punting from the five, and this one is a wobbler that's going to go straight to the 50-yard line, then bounce back into the St. Genevieve 46-yard line. They'll spot it at the 47. So St. Genevieve going to try to go ahead on this next possession here with a tie score 7-7 with 5-17 to play. St. Genevieve started about that same spot on all, on all their possessions so far tonight due to the two pooch kicks kickoffs by Potosi and now that punt. Right at the 47 they went 53 yards on their last drive capped it off with a 29 yard run by Brendan Dallas to tie this game at 7-7. Let's see what St. Genevieve has coming for Potosi now. Again it Schwent split out to the left with two backs in the backfield. Drury under center takes the snap hands it off to Dallas and Dallas has had some pretty good holes to run through to close as quickly as he gets up to the 50 yard line for about a three yard gain on that one. Second down and seven coming up but Brendan Dallas now has four carries in this game. He's up to 35 yards. Not too bad for four carries. He's doing quite well so far to start this evening. He averages 6.9 per carry, 206 yards coming into this one on 30 carries, three touchdowns on the season. He's now got four. Here's another handoff left side. It is Gabe Meyer, elusive running, then lowered a shoulder at the end of it, made something out of nothing. He's going to pick up three to four yards on that one, set up third and short for St. Jim. You know, we talked about Meyer in the first game that we called. He's, he's short, he's compact, and he just keeps his legs churning. And that right there is a prime example of it. He fought for every yard. Ten yards on three carries for Gabe Meyer, and it's third down and four from the Potosi 47-yard line. Here is the option play. Matt Drury running to his left. His option man ran around him, so he's going to keep it himself, and he's up to the 30-yard line. Finally wrote down on the play by Blaine Riddle, but not before he got the first down. At about the 39-yard line, or 29-yard line, first down Dragons. Well, Dury was looking to pitch that ball, but nobody was there to pitch it to, so he decided to tuck it and run. And I'll tell you what made that play work was number 37, Gabe Meyer, with a great cutback block. 
to seal Dury to seal Dury to the outside. And Drury was the pitch man, but he ended up just going upfield to make the block, and that got the 18-yard run there by Drury. First down and 10, 29-yard line. Schwent will be split out to the right with two backs in the backfield. Meyer and Dallas. They'll fake it to Meyer. Drury drops back to pass. He's looking for Swint deep. Swint holds it in. He's through the five. Stretches for the pylon. Touchdown. Dragons. Matter of time before we saw Swint step up big. I tell you, that's a beautiful catch by Swint, but you got to give it to Dury there for that pass. That was right on where he needed to be, only where his receiver could pull that into the outside of the field. Excellent throw there by a young man, Dury. Two catches for Schwent, 34 yards and a touchdown. St. Genevieve now leads 13-7. to Quick strike for the Dragons. That one goes for 29 yards, just like the Brendan Dallas 29-yard line. They're liking starting at the 47, getting it up to the 29, then punching it in. 13-7 the score. Nager for the extra point. He's going to put it up and stick it through. It's 14-7 Dragons. 3.53 to play. First quarter. It's been an exciting one so far when with the Dragons player. We're back in a minute on in- J98. Gebhardt's Auto Repair of Perryville has been in business 39 years, and these days it's that kind of experience you want when you need your vehicle repaired. Gebhardt's does repair on all types of vehicles. They're a complete car service center, doing wheel alignments, tune-ups, AC work, even engine replacement. And they sell all brands of tires. Anything you need, just give them a call at 573-547-4589. Gebhardt's Auto Repair on Kings Highway, right across from the Perry Park Center in Perryville. Need a concrete job? Let Polite Ready Mix do the job for you. Polite Ready Mix has been in business for nearly three decades, and they're locally owned and operated with five locations servicing Washington, Iron, St. Francis, and surrounding counties. And in addition to their already great service, Polite Ready Mix offers several trucks in a concrete conveyor. Contact Polite Ready Mix, nearest you for a no-obligation estimate today. A short kickoff is fielded by Cody Riggs up at Tosi about the 25-yard line. He gets some yardage out of it up near the 35-yard line. They'll spot it right between the 35 and the 36. That's where Potosi will take over. But St. John's first uh, possession goes the way of a punt. Then Potosi scores. Dragons kind of learned from the mistakes and went two quick drives for touchdown. St. Genevieve leads 14-7. And that last drive was just a perfectly executed drive there by the St. Genevieve team. Three minutes, 48 seconds left in the first quarter. Vincent under center. Weidman the back in the backfield. It is Glory to the left. Cooley to the right. They'll pitch it out to Weidman. Weidman, not much of a hole. He's back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a half yard on the carry. Devin Brown, number 50 on that stop. What a nice breakdown to make that tackle. So Dusty Weidman hasn't had any carries go above five yards so far in this game. He's already gotten six carries. He's ran for three, three, five, zero, two, and zero. Second down and ten. From the 35-yard line, three minutes, 23 seconds left to go first quarter. Here's Cooley to the right, Glore to the left. Two tight ends for Potosi. Under center, it's Aaron Benson, the junior quarterback. They will hand it off, and Weidman's going to get one yard to the left side, maybe two, before being brought down by Gabe Meyer and company for St. Jen. It's tough. It's tough running right now for Weidman. This St. Genevieve defensive line is really sealing off the gaps making it tough for them to get any kind of yardage. Two-yard carry up to the 37-yard line, third down and eight coming up. And Weidman's used to that. Sometimes you got to soften up a defense before you break off those big runs. So he'll keep going right at him, and St. Jim will keep answering the call with that big defensive line. Third and eight from the 37. Weidman, the lone back in the backfield, play fake to him. Vincent's rolling out. He's in some trouble. He fires a dart over the middle, nearly intercepted in and out of the hands of Brendan Dallas, incomplete. But it'll be fourth and eight, so St. Jim's D wins the battle. It was a good job there by the St. Genevieve team. Brendan Dallas knew it. He thought that pass was thrown to him. He took off running just a little bit before he had it. Brendan Dallas is playing the safety spot in place of Roth. Coach Weiler telling us in the pregame interview that Roth could be available in this game if they absolutely need him, but they'd rather just give him the night off, let him heal up. I've noticed he was dressed and he's ready to go, and I'm sure if that young man had a chance, he'd be on that field right now. Brendan Dallas does have eight tackles on the year, but no interceptions. He just missed a chance for his first one there. He does have a touchdown, though, tonight on offense, and now we get the punt from Potosi. Dakota Glor is going to boot one deep, and this is a line drive spiral fielded at the 30 by Brendan Dallas. He's going to make a man miss at the 35 to the 40. He's up across the 50. Look at him go to the 40, up the sideline to the 30. It's a foot race, and he is still going to the 5, to the end zone. Did he get in? No. All the way down to the 2-yard line. 
Wow, you're looking at 70 yards at the sideline, 68 since he was pushed out at about the two. And didn't quite get in, but what a run back. I'll tell you what, Glenn, from the very, as soon as he caught that ball, there were four white jerseys running right at him. His speed just took him to the outside. He saw a couple blocks, and he just followed his blockers down the sideline. Just just a shoestring tackle, Jared, just to knock him off his balance. He tightroped it and got knocked out of bounds there at the three. Maybe he was a little mad that he dropped that interception, and he just was determined to get to the end zone. He just stepped out of bounds. They'll call it the three-yard line. First down and goal from St. Genevieve. Drury under center. Two backs in the backfield. They'll hand it off to Dallas. Can he finish where he started? Pushes the pile to the goal line. Oh, yeah, Brendan Dallas. Just made it 20 to 7 on a three yard run. Boy, just the effort and the wheel to, to get in the end zone on that on that punt is just that's what they preach here at St. Genevieve, and that's what makes this team a winning squad. Dallas scores his second touchdown of the night. Set up by about a 70 yard punt return up the sideline after he was pushed out of bounds at the three. And now Nager is on to make it 21 to 7 if he can knock it through with two minutes and 19 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Yeah, we're still in the first. Neger is going to put this one up, and he's going to put it through. 21-7, to 2-19 to play first quarter. I understand we have an update from Luke Turnbow, so let's see what Luke, Luke is cooking here on J98. For this update game as the Indians are taking on the Herculaneum Black Cats and the Herculaneum Black Cats, they strike first. St. Vincent got the ball, but their first play from possession, Billy Duncan of the Herculaneum Black, Cat, Black Cats, he intercepted the first play. Trent Elder threw a pass, and uh, Billy Duncan was right there on it. Took it up to the uh, 46-yard line, so the uh, Black Cats needed 54 yards, and they drove all the way on their first possession. One-yard run into the end zone by Dustin Johnson. It was set up by a big 19-yard pass play. Jacob LaBreer to Aaron Fuller all the way to the one-yard line. That set up the one-yard run for Johnson. Herculaneum on top of St. Vincent, 7 to nothing. Seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Now St. Genevieve kicking it off to Potosi. Dakota Glor is going to run the ball back to just above the 20-yard line, up to around the 27-yard line. It was originally fielded by Cody Riggs, but he handed it off to him. And now it's going to be Potosi football at the 27-yard line. Now down 21-7, St. Genevieve's offense that didn't take a long to start clicking after that first possession. You know, it looked like Potosi started off with a bang. Nice offensive drive. But since that first series they had, it just kind of tapered off for this Potosi team. Two minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. 21 to 7, our score. St. Jen leads. By the way, those Luke Turnbow updates brought to you by Ruther Ford and Herculaneum, Geb Harps Auto Repair in Perryville, Warner Auto Body in Perryville, and Perryville Pumpkin Farm in Perryville. Potosi goes to work. First down and 10 from the 27 yard line. Play fake. Vincent makes a man miss, and he wants to go deep. Throws a pretty nice ball, but just overthrows his man at the 45 yard line. Vincent put it right there, but Dusty Weidman couldn't reel it in with the one hand. Weidman kind of went, he kind of stutter stepped there for a second. If he could have kept going in stride, he might have had a little better chance at that. But I'll tell you what, that was a pretty thrown ball there by the quarterback for Potosi. We also want to thank Make It Personal and Farmington, along with ProCare Automotive and Bon Terre, Benning Ford and Frederictown, and Earth Mother Health Foods for sponsoring the broadcast tonight. It's the J98 game of the week, 21-7. to It is St. Genevieve leading Potosi. Now the Trojans need to go back to work on offense. Their first drive resulted in a touchdown. Vincent completed his first two passes for 38, then 35 yards for the score. His last two passes has fallen incomplete. Second down and six, second down and 10 from the 26-yard line. Aaron Vincent from the shotgun. It's a low snap, but he feels it. Drops back the pass. Has all day. He's going to fire over the middle, and he's got him in at the 50-yard line, and he'll be brought down at the 43-yard line. A perfect pass and catch. That was Syme hauling that one in. Yeah, and Dalton Syme was sitting there just waiting, waving for him to throw him the ball because he was wide open, cutting behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. That was a nice pass play there by Vincent. 32 yards on the pass and catch there to Syme. And Aaron Vincent, he's not afraid to chuck a ball downfield, is he, Dennis? He's got a nice arm. I've noticed it in pregame warm-up. He really had a nice tight spiral. First down and 10 from the 43-yard line. They'll go back under center here with Vincent. They'll split Cooley out to the right, Glore to the left. Dropping back to pass on a straight drop back is Vincent. Rolls to the right. Now he's going to tuck it and try to run. Get some positive yards up near the 40 to about the 42-yard line. About a yard on the carry for Vincent. 
that play there. He really had nothing, nowhere to go with that ball. This defensive backfield for this St. Genevieve team had completely covered. Second down, nine yards to go. Aaron Vincent, that was his first carry. Dusty Weidman hasn't had a whole lot of room to run either. He's got 15 yards on seven carries, but Vincent through the air, he's three for five. He's completed passes of 38, 35, and 32 in this ball game. Second down for Potosi. Now they'll go with four receivers trying to spread out this defense. I might look for a run here with the spread look, and here's the shotgun snap. They will delay it to Dusty Weidman, but he is met immediately. He's going to lose two yards, and there were a couple of St. Jen defenders there ready to bring him down. Number 75, Zach Jam- I can't Jamerson. Jamerson, right? Jamerson, yeah. yeah. What a stop. I mean, he completely blew up that offensive lineman to get in there and make a nice tackle. He loses two yards on that carry. That's the first time Weidman's gone backwards tonight, and that puts Potosi in a tough spot on third down and 12 from the St. Jen 45-yard line, but maybe in four-down territory if you can get a chunk of it on this play. Third down and 12. One minute, three seconds left in the first quarter. Shotgun snap. Vincent straight drop back. And again, he's going deep and into double coverage. And it's picked off. This is Brendan Dallas at the 30-yard line. He's up to the 40. Still on his feet as he's up to the 45-yard line. So Dallas wasn't dropping that interception. He comes up with it, and he is making a strong case for player of the game honors today, Dennis. <laughs> You've got that right. I tell you, that young man's here to play tonight. My goodness. Our player of the game is brought to you by Unico Bank and Potosi and Deloge and Brendan Dallas, Brendan Dallas with two touchdowns already and that interception and a big punt return. Man, he is certainly making that case. Potosi turns it over for the first time and now St. Genevieve football. First and 10 from their own 45-yard line now. Here come the Dragons. It is Drury dropping back to pass. He's looking for a man deep. We're going to get a pass interference as Schwent was tangled up with one of those defensive backs. And tell you what, if he gets free there, I think that ball would have been right there on him for a touchdown. So not a terrible penalty for Potosi. And I hate to say it, but that's that's exactly why that young man grabbed a hold of him. He knew he was beat to the inside, and that was all he could do to stop that play from going for a touchdown. Potosi has turned the ball over once. They've committed two penalties. They're losing both battles, and they're losing on the scoreboard 21-7. to 7. 46 seconds left to go in the first quarter. You know, Glenn Coach Stolzer was talking about his team all so far this season has been starting slow. Well, they've come out on fire here tonight. They've been lighting everybody up. I mean, in the third, we've been looking at their stats. They've been outscoring people coming out at halftime 40-7. to 7. And right now tonight, they're on fire starting this game. Yeah, we were thinking, oh, no, here we go again on that first possession. St. Jenton couldn't get much going, but uh, the three possessions since, and now this fourth one, they are looking unstoppable. Here is Drury dropping back to pass again. Fires an out-route pattern to Schwent, who hauls it in with his great hands. He makes the catch, gets about five yards, but he's down on the turf now. The St. Jenton trainers are going to come out and look at him. He was hit pretty hard from behind, and he just went straight down and didn't come back up right away. And Hopefully this young man's okay because he is absolutely a playmaker. But beyond that, just you never want to see anybody get hurt. Looks like he's holding a knee, Glenn. I don't want to speculate any injuries by any means, but from up here, it looks like he's grabbing the, at the knee area. Drury, by the way, has completed all four passes he's thrown. That was the shortest pass of the day. And it goes to Schwent for four yards. Schwent has caught three passes for 38 yards and a touchdown. Gabe Meyer has the other reception that went for 14 yards. And while they tend – to Mr. Schwent on the field. We've got another Luke Turnbow update to get you. We'll get you that right now on J98. St. Vincent Indian strike right back and cuts the lead to one point. The Herculaneum Black Hats lead 7-6. to six. It was a 64-yard drive for the Indians. 17-yard scamper into the end zone by Trent Elder, the quarterback. They had the offense spread out. Elder just found a hole and uh, made it into the end zone. They went for two, however. That didn't work out. So Hershey has the one-point lead. Also, that drive by the Indians, four big runs by Alex Winkler for about 30 yards. So the Black Cats lead the Indians 7-6. to six. We have about three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Boy, Service and quality. Boy, lumber. The way that it should be. Boy, lumber. We know your by first name. Build with us, you'll be glad you came. Boyer Lumber. We have it all right here. Boyer Lumber. And help is always near for service and quality. It's Boyer Lumber. Boyer Lumber. 
Well, Adam Schwent coming off the field. It looks like, for the most part, under his own power. He's a little bit gimpy on what looks to be a knee, like you said, Dennis, but you don't want to speculate too much as to what it could be. St. Genevieve has built up a 21-7 lead. We're still in the first quarter with 37 seconds left. And, you know, Schwent's not looking like it's too serious out there, but I don't know how much you want to risk it bringing him back into a game like this. Well, now they're actually helping him off the field a little yeah. more. So I tell you, you do not want to use, lose a young man like that. This team – has been bitten by the injury bug already this season um, with the multiple players that are key players for this team. I tell you what, though, you're losing an all-stater like that, young man. That's not something you want to have take too lightly. Yeah, Dan Lurk didn't even get to play a down this year. He was out for the season before it started. Jacob Rose out tonight. Tyson Roth is out tonight. And now Luke Palmer is in at receiver taking his place on second down and six. Here's a pitch out to Meyer. Meyer's across the 35-yard line down to about the 33, a three-yard carry there for Gabe Meyer, setting up third down and short, coming up for the St. Gen Dragons, who already lead 21-7. John Meyer Motor Company in Crystal City, the name to remember for all your truck and tractor repair needs, including lawn tractors. That's right, John I Meyer Motor Company can help. What are we Have doing? a question? Contact John Meyer Motor Company at 636-937-3727 or visit them at 213 Truman Boulevard, close to the tracks in Crystal City. John Meyer Motor Company, your truck and tractor repair professionals. That number again is 636-937-3727. Well, St. Genevieve is moving the ball very effectively and efficiently, not quite as efficiently as the... Uh, you know, as what we've seen in the past, especially starting off. But after those first three drives, St. Genevieve has really gotten it going. They now lead 21-7. to Gabe Meyer just gave St. Genevieve a first down when we went to break for no reason right there. So first down and 10 coming up. The quarter comes to an end. We'll keep it right here because I don't want to miss any more action. But 21-7, to Dennis, after the first quarter, St. Jen's looking good. St. Jen's started this ball game off a little slow on that first series. But I'll tell you what, after that first series, they've lit it up. They've looked act. Probably the best that we've saw in play so far this year as far as being a balanced attack, running the ball plus with passing. Since we've got people that don't know how to send us to commercial, I want to thank these sponsors myself. Raiden May Concrete in Farmington, Gifford Lumber Company in Farmington, Midwest Convenient Care in Farmington and Von Terre, Hood's Discount Home Center in Farmington, Show Me Rent to Own, and Buckley Towing in Park Hills. Thank you so much for sponsoring our broadcast today as it is a 21-7 lead, St. Genevieve over Potosi. Potosi drove right down and scored on that first possession. Aaron Benson has looked pretty good throwing the football. He really hasn't been out there a whole lot tonight because St. Jen's just controlling the clock, but he did make that one mistake throwing the interception. But what's Potosi need to do to kind of stop all this progress St. Jen's made? Well, they actually need to be on there, have their offense out on the field exactly. just a little bit longer. I mean, their defense is going to get wore out as this game goes on. And to me, they need to get a more balanced offensive attack. There for a while, they're running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. St. Genevieve's keying up on that. When they spread the ball downfield, they actually open up the running game for their running back here, Wyden. St. Genevieve has a first down and 10 from the Potosi 24 as they change sides of the field after the quarter changes. Here's Brendan Dallas running left and spinning off a couple of tacklers. He's up there close to the sticks on a nice run of about eight to nine yards, second and short coming up. Brendan Dallas... I said it earlier, he's making his case for player of the game already in this one. That was a nine-yard carry for Dallas. Second down and one from the 15. Power run set again. It's Palmer out to the right and a play fake. Here's Drury rolling to the right. He's looking for Palmer in the end zone, in the corner, and in and out of his hands. Incomplete. He just couldn't quite reel that one in. It drops to the turf, third and short coming up. Yeah, Palmer had it. Had good placement in the end zone on, just hit him in the hand, just could not bring it in. Luke Palmer, a chance to step up and make some plays now with some uh, injured receivers for St. Genevieve. Rowe and Schwent now are uh, out of this ball game. Rowe couldn't even make the start after he had some concussion symptoms against Maplewood last week. Schwent made the start and got a touchdown already in this game, but he comes out with what looked to be a knee. Palmer's in there now. Here's a third and short handoff to the right side. Brendan Dallas, he's running with some power, and he's up close to the 10. He's easily going to get the first down, pick up uh, the three to four yards for Brendan Dallas. You know, Brendan Dallas is just running with authority tonight. And we've covered him in that first in week one. He looked very good, but tonight, Glenn, he just looked lights out. It is a first down and 10. They'll call it from the 12-yard line now. St. Genevieve can still get a first down at the two. 
Drury is going to come up under center. Dallas and Meyer, the backs in the backfield, split backs in the backfield. And one receiver out left. They'll hand it off to Brendan Dallas. This time he is going to be driven back, but he's still pushing the pile, trying to make something happen. Not much on the carry. Yeah, you got to give it to the Potosi defensive line that time. They really close all gaps. And that's a pickup of zero on the carry from Brendan Dallas. He's gone backwards once. He's gone for zero once. Everything else for him has been pretty positive tonight, including two touchdown runs to give him five on the year. Second down and 10 from the 12. Palmer will be the lone receiver split out to the left. And the backs in the backfield continue to be Mr. Dallas and Mr. Meyer with Gilo, the tight end, up to the left. Here's a play fake, and the defense was all over it. Brought down in the backfield, I believe. Is that Dusty Weidman splitting through there and it making the tackle? 30 Dusty Weidman. Nice stop there from his linebacker spot for this Potosi team. Man, he didn't bite on that play fake at all. He was right through there and right on top of Matt Drury, who goes down and loses six yards on the play. Third down and 16 from the 18 now. Potosi's defense needs to make a stop, and they're starting to right there. Ten minutes to play, first half. St. Genevieve has jumped out to a 21-7 lead with 21 unanswered points. Palmer will split to the right this time with split backs in the backfield. Drury under center, but first, we've got a timeout. I think St. Genevieve wants to talk it over, and they will. 9.59 left to play in the first half. We'll try to step away for 30 seconds here on J98. Are you in need of an appliance? Marzuko Electric Best Brands Plus in St. Genevieve and Perryville is your home of GE, Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, Frigidaire, and more. In all, Marzuko Electric carries over 12 lines of appliances, electronics, satellites, and TVs. They also offer factory-authorized appliance service, as well as residential, commercial, or industrial electrical service. For all your appliance needs or for professional electrical service, visit Marzuko Electric at 425 Market Street in St. Genevieve or Crossroads Village Center in Perryville. Nine minutes, 59 seconds left to play in the first half. St. Genevieve on a 21-0 run here over Potosi to lead at 21-7. And St. Gen's driving again, but the Potosi just came up with a big stop on defense, getting a sack from Dusty Wyman, setting up St. Gen with a third down and 16 from the 18. But, you know, it's not over there. Potosi probably going to have to make two more stops here. St. Gen, you would think they could go for it on fourth down, at least get close enough to where it's a chip shot field goal. Oh, exactly. This St. Genevieve team, they're in four down territory for sure with the offense that they have going here tonight. Palmer is the receiver to the right. They're going to split out Meyer in the slot to the left along with Dallas. Gilo is the tight end on the line to the right. And Drury is going to work from the shotgun this time. Third down at 16 from the 18. They're going to send a man in motion. That is Meyer. Fake the handoff to him. And Drury dropping back to pass. And he's going to be almost taken down. Gets out of it to the 30. He's trying to run with the football. And they finally got him ripped down down to about the 27, 28-yard line, so still loses 10 yards. That could have been a lot worse, though. I don't know how he made so many people miss. <laughs> Somebody had him completely wrapped up, and he just, like, jumped up out of their hands and got away from him somehow. It was – I have no idea, but I tell you, it was a nice play by him to – get whatever yardage back that he could ends up being a loss of eight there for Drury so fourth down and 24 the Dragons are going to go for it and yeah the Potosi defense just kind of needs to learn there not to stop till the whistle's blown because they could have had them for a loss of about five to six more then a flag comes out before the start of this play if it's against St. Genevieve they're already looking at fourth and 24 here but it's going to go against Potosi coming across the line with a neutral zone infraction was one of those defensive linemen. So that gives St. Genevieve five more yards, setting them up with fourth down and I think 19 here. That'll help a little bit, but they're looking in zone. That penalty on Potosi is their third in this ballgame. I believe St. Genevieve has been penalty free so far. So we'll go fourth and 19. Palmer split out to the right. Meyer in the slot to the left. Dallas is split out wide left. Drury from the shotgun. He'll take the snap. He's going to roll to his left. Steps up in the pocket. Makes one man miss. He's still looking downfield. He's just going to try to run for it. He's across the 20, up to about the 15-yard line before he just goes out of bounds. It's going to be a turnover on downs, but he gets some yardage there to back up Potosi. He got him back to the original line of scrimmage. But I tell you what, it was good effort by him just to tuck the ball and just get it back to what he could. Jury picks up six yards on that one. It'll be first down and 10, 19-yard line for the Potosi Trojans. So their defense comes up big. They've now stopped St. Genevieve twice tonight, getting a turnover on downs, a couple of turnovers on downs in this one. 
They've also let up some big plays. Let's see what Potosi's offense does. They're on the field now. They, they need to sustain a drive here. Aaron Vincent's going to work with four wide, one back in the backfield. Man in motion from right to left and a play fake. Here's Vincent rolling to his left. Steps up in the pocket. Now he's back in the end zone. He better be careful. Now he's up to the five-yard line. He's going to fire one deep. It has a man. He caught it at the 40 to the 50 before being driven out of bounds. Aaron Vincent making something happen with his feet. by a time for his receiver for the big play. And he goes to number 30. To Austin Cooley on that reception. That's his big playmaker here so far tonight. 44 yards on the catch there for Cooley. Cooley has been the big play guy today. He's already over 100 yards receiving on the day, and only other catch made tonight has been Dalton Symes. So Austin Cooley with a 43-yard catch, his longest of the game, first down and 10. From the 38-yard line, split receivers, one to the right, one to the left, two tight ends set. Make it three receivers as a man comes in motion. Shotgun snap to Vincent. Vincent drops back. He's going deep again. He's dropping bombs tonight. This one is a little bit overthrown. Might have been tipped off by a St. Genevieve defender back there. Brendan Dallas coming up to make a play. I'm impressed with how Vincent's pass. I mean, he just got a, a nice ball. He throws. And uh, for him to get out of the end zone, almost sacked in the end zone for a safety to make that play. That's saying something for that young quarterback. Second down and 10 from the 38-yard line of St. Genevieve after a big 43-yard pass and catch from Aaron Vincent to Austin Cooley. Dakota Glore will line up wide left here. He's got it at the 40. One receiver to the right. I formation here for Potosi as they come up under center. We've got a whistle and a timeout for Potosi. 8.27 left to go. First half, 21-7, St. Genevieve leads the Trojans. We're back in 30 seconds on J98, the boot. Gifford Lumber Company in Farmington. Hi, this is Andy Eck with Gifford Lumber Company in Farmington. Did you know at Gifford Lumber we've got more than just wood? We've got tools, trash bags, cleaning supplies, and furnace filters. And did you know at Gifford Lumber we sell trash cans, wheelbarrows, plumbing supplies, and we even repair window and door screens? And did you know we sharpen mower blades, saw blades, and knives? We've got more than just wood at Gifford Lumber. Stop by and see us on Potosi Street in Farmington. one thing is for sure, Potosi can move the football, but can they continue to sustain drives and keep St. Genevieve's offense off the field? Because that Potosi defense has to be getting worn down by now, the way St. Jen's offense has kind of controlled things so far. But when Potosi's offense has been out there, they've looked effective. They have. I mean, their passing game is really nice. I mean, if they just have to mix it up and kind of keep a little more balanced attack going here, and they, they might have something here. There's still a lot of game here left in this so so far here tonight. Second down and 10 from the 38-yard line for Potosi. Dakota Glore will line up wide left. Potosi spreading them out with four receivers. Dusty Weidman, the back of the backfield. Vincent working from the shotgun. There's the snap. It's a low one. Skips in there. Pump fake, and he's going to go deep again. Has Glore wide open. Makes the catch. Cuts it inside. To the 10. To the 5. See you later, Potosi. Makes it a one-score game, and Aaron Vincent is making it happen. My goodness, what a good play, heads-up play by Glore, too, to cut it back to the inside. Had his defensive back trip up over his own feet there and go in for the score. 81-yard drive. Potosi makes it a one-score game. It's a 38-yard pass and catch, this time to Dakota Glore, who was a Dream Team baseball player. His older brother, Tanner Glore, was a standout baseball player from Mineral Area College and a Dream Team football player as well. So you know he's an athlete. Now for the extra point. Here we go. There's the snap, and the kick is blocked. So St. Genevieve comes up with a big special teams play to keep Potosi from getting that extra point, but it stays 21-13. Potosi within eight with 8.19 left to go in the first half. We're back in one minute. You're listening to G98. Where you always get a sweet deal. Get 0% APR up to 60 months on select 2012 models or rebates up to and exceeding $7,000 right now at Ruther Ford at the Herculaneum exit. Hi, this is Doug Jr. with Jefferson County's best lineup of new Fords and certified pre-owned.
Right now at Ruther Ford, we have a new stable of 2013 Mustangs, plus new 2013 Escapes, and the new 2013 Fusions are on the way. Plus, just in at Ruther Ford is the new 2013 Focus ST with the all new two liter EcoBoost engine. Plus, our recent summer savings produce a terrific selection of pre-owned vehicles as well. Remember, Ruther Ford is proud to be tops in the region in customer satisfaction. We are Ruther Ford I-55 at the Herculaneum Auto Mall exit. Ruther Ford, Ruther.com. It's a ball game at the Dragons Lair, 21-13, St. Genevieve. Potosi just scored, and now on a kickoff return, a low-line drive is picked up by Ryan Carl. He brings it back to the 36-yard line, and St. Genevieve has decent field position, but they've been used to starting at the 47-yard line. Now they'll start a few yards back, but uh, with their offense, they can start from anywhere on the field. I'm really curious now to see how this offense for St. Genevieve will operate without Swint on the outside. That could be a big loss in this game. You know, down in the red zone, they could use a guy like Schwent, and they ended up turning the ball over on downs on that last possession. Without him, Luke Palmer has stepped into that role. We'll see how he does. He does have one drop tonight. Here's a pitch out. Brendan Dallas. Brendan has the 40-yard line, and he's up to about the 42. That ends up being a pretty good gain of about five yards, maybe six, for Brendan Dallas. That time, the defense for Potosi was a man short. That he would come running out on the field when the ball was snapped. So that definitely couldn't help him out any. Five-yard carry. Brendan Dallas, second down and five. 41-yard line is where they rolled him out. Palmer will be split out to the left. St. Genevieve sticking with the two-back offense. Here's the pitch to Dallas again, and he's roped up in the backfield, but breaks out of it, and he gets the original line of scrimmage back. No gain on the play. They could have had him for a loss of three or four. They just couldn't quite bring him down in the backfield. Yeah, I can't quite make it out who it is. Um, Looks like Syme, is Syme, yeah. 36, hit him in the backfield. Syme kind of got up a little slow after making that initial hit. They gave Brendan Dallas one yard on that last carry, third down and four. That was a generous spot to even give him that. So from the 42-yard line, St. Jen goes back to work. It's a play fake, and Drury's going to drop one just over the middle to Brendan Dallas, who makes the catch. He spun out of bounds at the 46-yard line of Potosi. That'll move the chains first down. Matt Dury just – Great. What a quarterback. You know, just floated that ball up over top of that defender to get it right in there to Dallas there to pick up a nice game and get that first down. 12-yard reception for Brendan Dallas, his first catch of the game. And Drury off that play fake. He's now dumped it off twice to a running back. They both made big plays for him. Gabe Meyer went 14 yards earlier, and Brendan Dallas goes 12. So first and 10 from the 46. Same formation with Palmer split to the left. Under center, it's Drury. He's going to fake the handoff, and they're going to run the option play. Drury's keeping it himself, and he shows his speed as he's going to pick up close to a first down all the way up to the 36-yard line. If he gets the 36, it is a first down, and it's right there with the nose of the football. They're going to move the chains. Oh, it was close. And what got that first down was Dury's determination kept his feet churning there because he had two defenders hitting, and he, he leaned forward to get that first down and get that ball across the – Dury got 11 yards on that run. First down and 10 from the 35. Seven minutes, 10 seconds left to go in the half. St. Genevieve trying to answer Potosi's score and drive. Here's that option play again, and they're going to get it bottled up in the backfield. Drury with absolutely nowhere to go. Dennis Booker comes up and makes the stop. On that option, you've got to you know pitch it out or run with it, and he had no choice to just uh, kind of take it for a loss on that one because Booker was all over it. That and he had his pitch man was completely covered up by a defender as well. So he did the right thing by just going down. Yeah, you, you saw him kind of pull up the ball and try to maybe pass out of it and throw an incomplete pass, but he thought better of it. You know what? We're not going to turn the ball over here. We'll live to play another down. And now we've got a timeout on the field. Potosi will keep it right here, though. Second down and about 13 coming up for the St. Genevieve Dragons. Midwest Orthopedic Group in Farmington brings you the broadcast along with American Family Insurance agent Bill Bess in Park Hills, Mineral Area College, Jim Rokey Shelter Insurance in St. Genevieve and County Dewitt Center in St. Genevieve. Pretty good ball game, 21-13. St. Gen with the lead, 6.47 to go in the half, and the Dragons trying to answer Potosi's score and drive back and kind of stick a dagger in them before halftime. And they need to. They need to go in with the score to kind of keep the momentum in their favor somewhat. I know Potosi just had a nice drive going down the field. But you're right, Glenn. This St. Genevieve team needs to go in right before half and just show them, hey, you know what? We still have a good offense as well, and we're going to punch it in. If you're just joining us, Adam Schwent has left this ball game with what looked to be a knee injury. He had 38 yards on three catches and a touchdown. He's St. Genevieve's star receiver, and he's 
still on the sideline, but he's sitting down on the bench with his head down, so it doesn't look like he's going to be returning anytime soon. Second down and 13. Drury takes the snap from under center. Play fake, rolls out to the left, steps up in the pocket, sees a running lane, and he's going to try for the edge, and he's got it. He's up to the 30-yard line, flash on the speed to the 20 before being ridden down out of bounds. Making the stop on that one, Levi Berry, but not before it's a St. Genevieve first down on a 17-yard carry by Drury. What a heads-up play by Matt Drury there. To see that his, defender, his receivers were covered up, Tuck that ball down and cut grain across the field to get a nice pickup. When he first took off of the edge, I didn't think he was going to make it, but, man, he sure got it in a hurry and picked up 17 yards. Yeah, you definitely saw the speed of that young man. First down and 10 from the 20. Under center again, it's Drury. Here's a handoff, and he's got a uh, convoy ahead of him. It is Brendan Dallas all the way up to the 5 for a gain of about 15 yards on the carry for Brendan Dallas. Brendan Dallas had his hand on the back of Dan Tarana there and just following his 270-pound, 6'6 lineman down the field. I'll tell you what, if you're going to do anything like that, that's the man to follow. He looks like, Dan Tarana looks like he should be playing on Saturdays and maybe even Sundays is how, how big he is, and he can sure back it up with his play. Here's another handoff on first and goal from the five. Brennan Dallas cuts it back inside, trying for the pylon. Didn't quite get it. He's about a yard short of the end zone. Dallas picks up four. I think that might have, and he looks like he's got a cramp right now, and his player's trying to help stretch it out. But that might have just been where the ball placement was in his hand there. That's how close it was to getting in. Second down and goal from the one-yard line and a timeout to check on the injury. You said the injured man is Dallas right now? It is Dallas, and he instantly had somebody come over and help stretch him out. 6-0-1 left to go, and, you know, for St. Genevieve, losing all these key players, not just tonight, but in weeks past as well. We talked about Lurk couldn't even play a game this season. He would have been the starting running back this year. Now Brendan Dallas is down on the field. Adam Schwentz already been taken out of this ball game. Tyson Roth could play tonight, but they want to play it safe with him. And then Jacob Rowe is going to miss at least this week. Those are some good football players that St. Genevieve's missing. You're definitely right. You're losing some key players, but – the thing in the heart and soul of this St. Genevieve squad, and it's been for years, is the talent that you can pick from. And look what steps up behind him. It's like the cream rises to the top, and that's exactly what happens here for the St. Genevieve Dragon team. Well, that just goes to show, look at all those guys they're missing, yet they're still moving the football the way they are here tonight. I mean, they're going to have second down and goal from the one-yard line. Hopefully, Brendan Dallas will be okay. But like you said, it's kind of one of those next-man-up philosophies for St. Genevieve. Now, obviously, individually for those players, your heart goes out for them because you want to be able to be able to play, but St. Jen has never really had to worry about depth so much because they just had, always have to seem seem to have somebody stepping up. Yeah, so there's always somebody stepping up, and making a play. And Brandon Dallas, he, he's just got a leg cramp right now. He's walking off on his own power. Yeah, he looks to be fine. He'll come off. He'll miss a play. Gabe Meyer will be the back of the backfield for St. Genevieve. They're also going to put Ryan Carl back there on second down and goal from the one. Carl's a big boy. He could carry it down on the goal line. We'll see if what St. Genevieve wants to do here. Or Drury could just keep it on a quarterback's knee. He's, he's going to come up from under center. From the one-yard line, takes the snap, hands it off a right side. It's Gabe Meyer. He lunges for the end zone, and they say he's in. He just got across. St. Genevieve stretches the lead to 27-13. to 13. Yeah, they weren't going to stop Gabe Meyer from getting in that end zone. He lowered his head and just followed his big offensive lineman right in. Well, Meyer has carried the ball five times. That's his first touchdown of the ball game. It makes it 27-13. Now Nager will be on for the extra point with 5.51 left to play in the first half. Clayton Nager trying to make this a 15-point ball game. I had to stall there and do math. I'm not good at it. <laughs> we got Drury as the holder. He takes the snap. Nager's going to put this one up. It's a high end over end kick, and it goes through the uprights. It's good. 28-13. St. Genevieve stretches the lead with 5.51 to play in the half. We're back in a minute on J98. It's Dunn Sporting Goods Fall Hunting Classic. We've got everything you need to make it happen. From now till September 16th, check out Dunn's and their lineup of Ruger guns and rifles, like the Ruger LCP 380 Automatic from the industry leader in rugged, reliable firearms. 
The LCP is lightweight and ideal for all day carrying. And right now at Dunn Sporting Goods, the Ruger LCP 3701 is just $289.99. And the Ruger LCP Laser Max 3718 is just $339.99. Also, be sure to check out America's favorite, the Ruger 1022 LR Rifle for only $189.99. Ruger guns and rifles are featured now during the Fall Hunting Classic at Dunn Sporting Goods in Peavely, Missouri and Marion, Illinois. For a complete sale flyer, go to shopduns.com. We got everything you need to make it happen. The kickoff has Cooley back to the five-yard line. He's going to try to make something happen up to the 15-yard line. Spins off a couple tackles and lunges forward to about the 17. Potosi will again start backed up, but they started at their 19 last time, drove it 81 yards for a touchdown. They'll try to do it again with the prolific passing game so far in this one. I tell you, I'm impressed with this special teams unit right now for St. Genevieve. Clay Nagger, he's got a leg on him. I'm like, my goodness, that went to the five-yard line back to Potosi receiver up to the five good coverage there by that squad first down and 10 they'll call it the 16 yard line for the Potosi Trojans they're going to spread out the St. Genevieve defense they'll send two receivers left and one to the right shotgun snap to Vincent straight drop back again he plants his foot and he darts one down the right side and it's a jump ball caught by Cooley at the 40 makes a man miss to the 50 it's a foot race to the 30 to the 20 he's slowing down a flag comes out he's to the goal line stretches and he's in for the touchdown but now let's check the flag as it stands that is an 84 yard touchdown pass and catch from Vincent to Cooley but it's coming back isn't it Dennis uh, it looks like it's going to be a sideline infraction against Potosi Someone a little too far out on the close to the field for this Potosi team. And another St. Jen player down on the field. We've got a lot to get sorted out here, but Aaron Vincent drops back, just guns one straight up the gut. Cooley wins a jump ball, makes a defender miss, takes it all the way. He's drugged down at the goal line, stretches, gets it across for 84 yards and a score. However, a flag on the field and plus an injured St. Jen player. So if it's a sideline infraction, Dennis – you would think Potosi would at least get a warning first before you take a touchdown off the board, but I guess if you're out there on the field impeding the progress of the St. Jim defenders, it's good enough to take one away from you. I think they actually did sign, did give them the score, and it'd probably be accessed on the kickoff. Well, that would make sense because Potosi certainly earned that score. The injured player, by the way, was Meyer, correct? Yes. Yeah, Gabe Meyer, so he's coming off, but he's under his own power, and he seems fine. But you're right, Dennis. It looks like they have given the score to Potosi. Or they have at least spotted it at the three-yard line. They haven't put it up on the scoreboard yet. It is touchdown, just ruled by the official. So the touchdown stands, the 84-yard touchdown strike from the quarterback, Vincent, to Cooley. And how big has Cooley been today? i tell you, that Vincent Cooley connection has been lights out for this Potosi team. I tell you what, Glenn, I just saw number 28, Tyson Roth, for uh, St. Genevieve come onto the field. Uh, they could use him right now because Aaron Vincent's picking him apart. Three touchdown passes. Get this. He's thrown one for 35 yards, for 38 yards, and now 84 yards. Cooley and Glore have been the targets today. And really, I think it's I, – I don't want to take anything away from Cooley and Glore, but Aaron Vincent is just putting it right on him and giving this, these receivers chances to make big plays for him. That, I'll tell you what, that was a nice play. But I'll tell you, Cooley went up and snatched yeah, that ball did. in coverage. <laughs> that did. was a nice catch by Cooley. You have to give the heads off to that young man. But all season long, and even going back to last year, I don't think I've seen this kind of confidence from a quarterback the way he's just flinging the ball everywhere. I mean, he's thrown one interception in this ball game. You didn't see him affect him at all. He just came right back, and he started chucking it downfield again. He's literally dropping bombs. On, well, not literally, I guess, but he's dropping bombs on St. Jen. He's definitely throwing the bombs, especially that 84-yarder. That was a – Heck of a play. And with the purple and white, it looks like the Dante Culpepper, Randy Moss days, doesn't it? Oh, the way yeah. they're just chucking it downfield. It's a lot of fun. And, and St. Genevieve keeps answering back with touchdown drives. This has been one of the game, best games of the year. Looks like Potosi, after a timeout, is going to try to go for two here and get to within seven. It's 28-19 right now with 528 left to play in the half. It took them one play to get in the end zone. An 84-yard bomb to Cooley. 
So on the two-point conversion, it's a low snap to Vincent. He's rolling to his right, fires over the middle, batted away, incomplete. Good job of the secondary of St. Genevieve. Tried to drop it over the right shoulder of his receiver, and St. Gen knocks it away. That was number 28, Tyson Roth, on that defensive play right there. And I tell you, if anything's hurt this St. Genevieve team on the big pass plays, it's been the lack of having your, your starting secondary back there. Well, we've got so much going on. We'll keep it right here between uh, possession changes here and let you know some other scoring going on. Central over Maplewood on AM800, KREI 7 to nothing. That went in the second quarter of that ball game. Festus leads DeSoto 20 to nothing on AM1400, KJF. The update game from G98 is Herculaneum over St. Vincent 7 to 6 in Perryville. North County over Hillsborough 12 to 7. Cuba over Windsor 20 to nothing. Valley Catholic leads Crystal City 7 to nothing. It's St. Pius Losing to Jefferson R7, 35 to 7. Grandview beating Missouri Military Academy, 20 to nothing. And that's all we've got right now. How about Grandview? They're trying to start 3 and 1 for the first time in a really long time. They've got another big lead tonight. <laughs> Grandview's turning it around this year. They're playing some good football. Now our ball game has us at a 28 19 score with St. Genevieve leading, but both teams looking impressive on offense. Haven't seen a whole lot of defense tonight. We did see one Brendan Dallas interception for St. Genevieve. So here's the kickoff. It's a low end over friend kick. It's going to be fielded by Meyer at the 15-yard line. He's going to take it up the sideline, and it's going to be brought down at the 40-yard line. I said Meyer. It was actually Luke Kittinger on the return for St. Genevieve. A nice return to set him up in good field position. We'll see if the St. Genevieve team can march this ball down the field one more time. First down and 10 from the 45 minutes and 21 seconds left in the half. And if you're Potosi's defense, you want to step up and make a play for your offense and get yourself back on the field and have a chance to get to within one score before halftime. But you can't let St. Jen just run all over you like they've been doing. And St. Jen's mix it up well with the run of the pass. It's tough to contain number 11 and number 23 tonight for Potosi. Jury is going to straight hand it off to Brennan Dallas. A big hole. He's up to the 50. Racing to the 40. Stiff arm at the 35. Dragged down at the 31-yard line by Cody Riggs. But the damage is done. Brendan Dallas, another big chunk of yardage. Well, I think tonight we're seeing one of the best running performances we've seen all year so far tonight. 29-yard carry by Brendan Dallas. Sets him up at the Potosi 31-yard line. Here we go. As effective as Potosi's been through the air, St. Genevieve on the ground has been just as dominant. Brendan Dallas breaking off big chunks tonight. He's got three touchdowns already. First and 10 from the 31-yard line. Make it two touchdowns for Brendan Dallas. Here's the pitch out for Gabe Meyer. He's trying to get the edge and cuts it up inside and makes a man. It's still going. Somehow broke all those tackles as he's to the 20 and then all the way down to the 10. Inside the 10-yard line, I thought Meyer was down. He ends up picking up about 20 yards on the carry to the left. Somehow he turned sideways just to get away from defenders and just kept breaking tackles left and right. It was nice run there by Meyer. My goodness. So Meyer from the 31-yard line takes it up to the 9-yard line for a 22-yard gain. By far his best run of the night. He's punched it in for a touchdown tonight. Six carries and a score for Gabe Meyer. First down and goal from the 9. Luke Palmer split out right. Two backs in the backfield, Dallas and Meyer. They'll hand it off to Dallas up the middle. And Dallas is met right away for no gain. Whether it's Brendan Dallas, Gabe Meyer, or Matt Drury, they pretty much split the carries, you know, 33% for each one of them. And tonight, it's been really all three of them doing some damage. Matt Drury's had some big runs, but I'd say Brendan Dallas, for the most part, has been the most deadly. Yeah, yeah young man, Dallas has had a heck of a game tonight. First down, second down, and goal. Under center, again, it's Drury. And they'll hand it off. This is Dallas again. Started right, then cuts it up inside. Not much on the carry. They're getting it closer to that five-yard line. It's going to set up a third down and goal under four minutes to play in the half. See if this Potosi team will have a bend but not break mentality going right here. 3.40 to play in the half. St. Genevieve coming up slow to the line now, taking their time. Luke Palmer again will be split out right. 
And this same look formation all night long has had Meyer and Dallas, the split backs in the backfield. Under center, it's Drury, and he's going to be roped down immediately as he drops back to pass. Some St. Jim fans are hoping for a face mask there as Potosi gets in there quickly. He's going to immediately lose about five yards back to the 10-yard line. Dusty Weidman come through there unabated on that right side and almost took Dury's head off. My goodness. Yeah, almost ripped his helmet off, literally. That's why the questionable face mask maybe went in there, but I guess he didn't grab the mask and was able to bring him down. So now we got fourth down and goal from the 10-yard line. Potosi's defense trying to come up big again. Remember, they got a big stand earlier in this ball game. It gets harder to score in that red zone. You run out of room. Palmer will line up wide to the left. Here is the quarterback dropping back to pass. Drury, Drury's under some pressure, steps up to the 15-yard line, fires. It's caught. No, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Clayton Gilo, the tight end. He couldn't roll it in. Actually, Stiegel on the tight end there, and he could not roll that one towards the end zone with the possession of the ball incomplete. That's the second time tonight that Potosi defense has held up tight and kept St. Genevieve from scoring inside the 10. So now you got to be careful here if you're Potosi. You're backed up, first and 10 on your own 10-yard line at the 241 mark in the first half. But if they can get it out of the shadow of their end zone, get another drive, get this to within one score before half, that'll do wonders for the confidence. And Potosi going to spread them out. Twins to the right, twins to the left. Weidman the back in the backfield. Vincent from the shotgun. It's another low snap. They need to get that under control. He drops back to pass. He's scrambling, steps up, and he's going to run up the middle and make the tackle. He's up to the 15-yard line. Cuts it back inside. Ooh, he lost a yard after that and got it to the 14 for a gain of about four. He made it a lot out of nothing there. He ran about 35 yards and picked up four. <laughs> but I tell you, he did a nice job just to get, get that four yards. Two carries for five yards for Vincent today. Second down and five from the 15-yard line. St. Genevieve late getting some substitutions in the ball game. Checking in Brandon LaRose as a defensive back on the far side of the field. Johnny Williams comes off, one of the D linemen. They put an extra D back in there. And now the shotgun snap, Vincent dropping straight back. He sure gives a lot of ground when he drops back. Now he steps up in the pocket. He's back in the end zone. He better be careful. Now he's back out in the field to play. He's going to tuck it and run, and he's going to get uh, no gain on this one. Maybe stretch for a yard. Good contained defense there by St. Genevieve. Vincent had nothing downfield. That was good coverage there by that secondary for this defense team for the Dragons. Give Vincent one yard on that one. So we've got third down, five yards to go at the 15-yard line. Potosi's own a 15. We're under a minute and a half to play in the first half. And that's not a good sign if you're a St. Genevieve fan. You see Swint on crutches on the sideline. You're right about that offensively and defensively because he's a good defensive back. Dropping back to pass, Vincent. Vincent with a pump fake, scrambling out of the pocket. Oh, what a sack. He is driven to the turf by Kyle Nicholson. The crown collision, collision of the game comes on the quarterback, Aaron Benson. His helmet went straight to the turf. That was one heck of a play there by number 73. I said Kyle Nicholson, Luke Himmerla is 73, 72 and 73 right there next to each other on the roster. So give credit where credit is due. It was Luke Himmerla with a big sack, and we've got a timeout with 58 seconds on the clock, which gives us time to go out to Perryville for a Luke Turnbow update. Let's see what Luke has to say. We are at halftime here at St. Vincent High School where the Herculean Black Cats are clinging to a 7-6 to six lead. Here's the recap of the scoring. All in the first quarter at the 7.07 mark, it was a 54-yard drive by the Herculaneum Black Cat. Dustin Johnson runs it in from one yard out. That was set up by a big 19-yard pass play. Jacob Labriere to Aaron Fuller all the way to the one-yard line, a 19-yard pass play. And then uh, right after that, St. Vincent gets the ball. They march 64 yards down the field. 17-yard run by Trent Elder, the quarterback, into the end zone. Four big runs on that drive by Alex Winkler for about 30 yards, and uh, that's where we stand. The extra point, they went for two. They, they didn't get it across the line. So, Black Cats of Herculaneum lead the St. Vincent Indians 7-6 to six at the half. It's a good one here in Perryville. <laughs> Hey, 
And for St. Genevieve, they've got themselves set up to get some pretty good field position as we've got a fourth down and 11 for Potosi. Dakota Glore is going to get off a wobbler. It's going to be punted to the 36-yard line and take a Potosi bounce and roll to the 40. Now they better stop it as it starts rolling back the other way. 40-yard line is where St. Genevieve is going to take over with 58 seconds left in the first half. A big possession here for St. Gen. If they can score again before half, they can really put a hurting on Potosi. We'll see what happens from the 40. Yeah, that'll make a big stand. That'll make a big impact going in at halftime with the, going in with the score. We'll see if St. Genevieve wants to spread Potosi out now here with only 58 seconds to play. Clayton Nager and Clayton Gilo are going to be lined up as wide receivers to the left. Luke Palmer and Brendan Dallas, it looks like, to the right. Yes, it is. So four wide here for St. Genevieve and Matt Drury, the quarterback, Gabe Meyer, the back in the backfield from a shotgun look. Officials taking some time to get the ball set. As we're at the 58-second mark to go in the first half. We've got some confusion out here with the officials as they come over to talk to Coach Bob Stolzer. Potosi's defense trying to hold before halftime. An 11-point deficit at the break. Wouldn't be too terrible, especially the way your offense has been playing. You'd have the confidence that you can overcome 11 points. But if you fall down by three scores before the break, you might be looking at some trouble. Let's see if St. Genevieve can do it. They've got four wide, and now Potosi's going to come across and give St. Genevieve five yards right there. Caleb Lawson comes across and makes contact on that defensive line. Five yards for St. Gen. will put him at the 35. The confusion, by the way, on that previous play was a game clock adjustment. They had 58 seconds on the clock. It needed to be down to 53, so we're at 53 seconds to play. Now they'll wind the clock, and here we go. First down and five from the 35-yard line. Here's the shotgun snap to Drury. He's going to roll to his left, hits his man on an out route. That's Clayton Nager. Nager's got the first down and picks up 10 to 12 yards as he's down to about the 20-yard line, 21. Give him 14 on the catch from Drury to Nager. It was a nice job that time by Dury. He looked downfield, saw the Palmer was covered, so he checked down and hit the young man Nager to the outside, pick up the first down. First down and 10, St. Genevieve. From the shotgun, it's Jury. They'll go four wide again. The ball at the 24-yard line. Potosi making some checks on defense, making sure they got everybody covered. Here's the shotgun snap. Jury, clean pocket. He's got all day to throw. Now it's starting to break down. He hits a man underneath. It's Palmer. Palmer makes a man miss at the 10, gets inside the 10, and that is going to move the chains again for St. Genevieve. That's a 14-yard pass and catch. Back-to-back 14-yard passes and catches for St. Genevieve. Palmer makes his first grab of the game. Playing for Schwent. First down and goal from the 10-yard line. They wind the clock. We're at 35 seconds to play in the half. Really plenty of time for St. Jen. Here's Drury. Takes the shotgun snap. Rolling left. Looking for the end zone. Stops. Changes directions. Now he's under pressure. Still rolling to the left. Steps up in the pocket. Lobs one back to the end zone. Just throws it away. Incomplete pass. And again, lives to play another down. 24 seconds on the clock. That was a good idea. I mean, anytime you you don't want to force a ball in, Good decision there by the quarterback. Well, I think, you know, any questions we had about Potosi offensively have been answered. They're a good offensive football team. Defensively, you know, they're playing St. Genevieve for one thing. That's never easy. But they've made a couple of stands with their back against the wall, and they're going to have to make another one here with time running out in the first half. Gabe Meyer, the back in the backfield. Jury from the shotgun. Dallas and Palmer split to the right. Gilo and Nager out to the left. 24 seconds on the clock as the play comes in to Matt Drury. Working from the shotgun, he stands at the 15-yard line. Line of scrimmage is the 10. There's the shotgun snap. He's going to try a quick hitter out to Palmer. Palmer inside the 10 to the 5, lunging, but he's well short of the end zone by a couple of yards. Clock still ticking. 15 seconds left to go. No timeouts left for St. Genevieve. They hurry back up to the line. We're down to 10 seconds, and St. Genevieve's really running out of time. Seven seconds. Down to five. Drury back to the line. Four seconds. Three seconds. Two. There's the snap. Drury keeps it. Pitches it out. It's a fumble. And Potosi's going to fall on it. And that's it. So they tried that little quick pitch, but the back wasn't ready for it. St. Genevieve's defense just came up with a big stand as St. Genevieve just couldn't get that last play figured out. I don't think they quite knew what they were doing there on that last one. I, I think the St. Genevieve team just completely lost track of the, the clock. 
that time. You had the people, the fans up here, you could hear them yelling, come on, hurry up. But it's a little different when you're out on the field and you're actually in game. Well, that'll go as a turnover on that pitch that went to nobody. Potosi fell on it, then the clock ran out. And at halftime, we have a 28-19 to lead for the St. Jen Dragons over the Potosi Trojans. A pretty good one in that first half, Dennis. It was a good game. I mean, Potosi come out, and they've done some good things. I mean, offensively, they, they look sharp. I mean, the passing game is, is effective. Uh, I think to, to stay in this game, in my personal opinion, they're going to have to be a little bit more balanced attack and see if they could get Weidman into the game and, uh, you know, with a little bit of running game. But And, you know, Mark Casey's going to come in at halftime and try to do some adjustments defensively to see if he can shut down um, Brendan Dallas on that running attack for St. Jen. It's a 28-19 to 19 lead for St. Genevieve over Potosi, and it's going to be the Trojans getting the ball first in the second half. Remember, they deferred on that opening kickoff, so Potosi will see that offense back on the field. It's a broadcast tonight that's brought to you by Accent Marketing in Farmington, Crown Collision Center in Farmington, Donaldson Cycles in Park Hills, Fliggs Equipment in St. Genevieve, along with Elpers and Gons in St. Genevieve, Marcuso Electric in St. Gen, Boyer Lumber Company in Potosi. Kicking off from left to right as you look on from the press box, here we go. The kick is in the air, and it is a line drive kick. It will be fielded by Dakota Glor. Actually, it's going to roll into the end zone. If Dakota touched that, no, he did not, and it's going to be a touchback as Dakota Dakota lets it go. First and 10 from the 20 for Potosi. Well, that was awfully close. I thought for sure he might have possibly looked like got a he hand touched on it, it yeah. but the official was right there on top of it and said he didn't. If he would have, and St. Jen would have gone down there and fall, fell on it in the end zone, that's a touchdown for St. Jen. Instead, Potosi football at the 20-yard line, and here we go. Aaron Vincent, 270 yards passing in that first half. 200 of those have gone to Austin Cooley. Look out for that combination in the second half. But, Dennis, you and I expect Dusty Weidman to get a more heavy workload in the second half, too. I say look out for Weidman here in the second half. Weidman is the back of the backfield. Vincent's working from the shotgun. There's the snap. Vincent's dropping back to pass. Rolls to his right. Fires deep. Way over through his target. Incomplete. And that is how we start the second half. Vincent throws his fourth incompletion. And that was the, the most off target so far tonight by Vincent. Second down and 10. 11.53 to left to go. In the third quarter, in a broadcast on KTJJ FM, Farmington Festus, Crystal City, St. Genevieve Potosi, second down and 10. Here comes Potosi to the line. They'll split out the receivers, two to the right and two more to the left. Under center, though, from Vincent and Weidman, the back of the backfield. Here's the snap and a pitch out, and it's a double reverse Dakota Glory. And he looks like he's got the option to pass it, and he is going to stop and try to gun one deep. Floats one over the middle, tipped up and intercepted. I think it's Dallas up the sideline, far side of the field. Dakota Glore on the double reverse option pass has the ball tipped in the air and intercepted. And was I right? Was that Dallas? That was Brendan Dallas on that interception, but great. That's what they practiced, the tip drill right there. Every day in practice, every team will practice that drill. And I'll tell you what, Brendan Dallas come up for the second pick tonight, almost his third interception from the night. Man, Dakota Glor stopped to plant and throw that football, and you could tell he was kind of thinking better of it, and he decided to let it go. Probably shouldn't if there was two defenders in the area. Well, Glor, when he got that handoff, kind of bobbled that ball. A play like that is deep in your own end is ill-advised I mean, from the get-go. St. Jen, first and 10 from the 21 of Potosi now. Here's Brendan Dallas following his blocks on a carry off right tackle, and he is up to the 20, inside the 20, maybe to the 17-yard line. Ended up getting good yardage on that one. That's a four-yard carry for Brendan Dallas. Follow, he following his lead backer there, number 37, Gabe Meyer. Right, Good lead blocking there by the young man. He got more yards than I thought he did on that carry. He got nine yards on that one. Second down and one, they'll call it. So he got all the way up to the 12-yard line. Second down and one from the 12. Under center, here comes Drury. He'll take the snap, hand it off to Meyer, or did he? No, he kept that himself, and Potosi was all over it, blasting him in the backfield for a loss. That went nowhere. Dallas Syme, number 53, had no part of that. What a stop by the uh, defensive lineman there for Potosi. Loss of four there for Drury. And he's had some nice carries, but he's also gone backwards on a plays just like that. As the Potosi defense doing a good job watching that football along the D-line. Third down and four. They will hand it off. Brendan Dallas trying to get the edge. He's up to the 10, inside the 10, up to about the 8-yard line. That should be enough for a first down to move the chains and make it first and goal, St. Jen. Brendan Dallas has yards 
16 yards in the second half on two carries. He went for nine, went for seven. First and goal, they'll call it the nine-yard line. St. Jen trying to get up in the 30s on their first possession that started at the 21-yard line thanks to a Brendan Dallas interception. Meyer and Dallas are the backs in the backfield. There's the snap and a handoff right side. It's Brendan Dallas again. He will turn up inside the five to about the three-yard line. Gain of six for Brendan Dallas. So far, coming out in this second half, St. Genevieve firing on all cylinders with what got him there in the first half. Got another update from Luke Turnbow. We'll wait on that until we have a break in this action, but we'll get you that Herculaneum and St. Vincent update coming up shortly as it stands right now for St. Genevieve. Second down and goal inside the five-yard line. Here's the snap to Drury. Drury's going to hand it off Dallas in a big hole again. He's up to the goal line. Touchdown. Five-yard run. Dallas sticks it in. St. Genevieve extends the lead. Dallas made that look easy following his big gap that he had by his offensive line. Hats off to this offensive line for the St. Genevieve Dragon team. All 21 yards go to Brendan Dallas on that drive. 34-19, to St. Gen extends the lead. It'll be Nager on for the extra point. And as soon as this goes through or doesn't go through, we'll send you out to Luke Turnbow. But let's see what Clayton Nager can do with the extra point. There's the snap and the hold. The kick is good. 35-19, St. Genevieve with the 16-point lead over Potosi. 9.43 left to play in the third quarter. Let's check in with Luke Turnbow from St. Vincent. Well, the Herculaneum Black Cats opened up the third quarter with a 67-yard drive capped off by a three-yard run into the end zone by Dustin Johnson. Johnson's been the show tonight for Herculaneum. He's carried the ball over 30 times already for about 150 yards. He had a big 28-yard run on a fourth down play to keep that drive going. And the extra points, no good. So it's a seven-point differential now. Herculaneum leads the St. Vincent Indians 13-6. to We have seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Left to go in this ball game. St. Genevieve has come out, got an interception from Brendan Dallas, and then rode Brendan Dallas all the way to the end zone on a five-yard touchdown run. St. Gen leads 35-19, and Potosi set to get the football back on the kickoff. Here's the low line drive, picked up at about the 16-yard line. He's going to come right up the middle with it. A big hole opens up to the 40, to the 50, one man to beat to the 40, to the 30, shakes off the tackle, 20-10-5, touchdown to Potosi. I guess you'll never guess who it was either. Cooley. Number 32, Austin Man, Cooley. That I, kid has been everywhere tonight. My goodness. He goes 84 yards for a touchdown on a pass play. How about 84 yards for a touchdown on a kick return? And Potosi right back in it. I tell you what, if you're a college scout and you want to come in here and make some highlight reels tonight of a couple young men, you come here and look at Austin Cooley and them number 23 for St. Genevieve. Man, oh, man, Brendan Dallas and Austin Cooley, you're right. They're putting it together. they got highlight reels going on here tonight. So now Potosi, let's see if they want to go for two and make this an eight-point game. It's 35-25 right now. They were lining up for the extra point, but I think Coach Casey's going to think better of this and go for two, try to get it to within eight points right now. And, you know, look out for Weidman, look out for Glure, look out for Cooley, or maybe Vincent. He's capable of keeping it himself and getting those three yards that he needs on the two-point conversion. 84 yards on a kick return, and Austin Cooley takes it to the house, and now we've got a timeout. Potosi, 35-25 with 9.31 left to go. Let's keep it right here. So Cooley, not only Dennis, 200 yards receiving, but he's also had that big kick return. And then you look at Brendan Dallas on the other side, not only 100-plus yards rushing and three touchdowns, he also has had a big punt return in this game, and he's also had two interceptions on defense. I mean, those two guys have been the bright and shining stars tonight. <laughs> You're definitely making a, a highlight reel for yourself tonight just in one game. If I was a, if I was a uh, coach, I would definitely take cuts from these games because they've both been doing outstanding. But i tell you what, he's a one-man show, this Austin Cooley. He's, he's really kind of taking this Potosi team on his back and really let him down the field. And the kid is only a sophomore, Dennis. 
a running back and defensive back sophomore. I mean, you're looking at St. Genevieve having nightmares over this kid the next two years and the rest of the teams in the white division. You know, Mark Casey's over there licking his chops. You know, he's got that young man for a couple more years. We might be seeing another Brandon Bourbon here for the Coast of Trojans. A, a coming out party for, for Cooley tonight. Before tonight, he has had a pretty good year. Eight receptions, 216 yards, and, and three touchdowns. But uh, tonight, he's already got 200 yards receiving, so he's pretty much matched his season total. And then the touchdowns are coming tonight for that young man, too. Now 35-25, Potosi going to line up like they're going to go for two. They're going to split two receivers out to the right from the three-yard line. I formation. Vincent's going to come up under center, takes the snap. He's going to roll to his right, steps up in the pocket, fires to the corner, bobbled, incomplete. It stays at a 10-point game. And how big was that, Dennis, for the St. Jen defense to keep this a two-possession ball game right now? Brandon Dallas on the coverage there. Good good defensive stake there by the St. Jen team. 931 left to play in the third quarter. We're back in 30 seconds. Potosi trails by 10 on J98. The Potosi R3 School District is committed to excellence. They are proud of their students and their athletes. They work hard, show much dedication, and are committed to excelling to high levels of achievement. The Potosi R3 School District congratulates all the athletes named to the 2012 J98 Dream Team. What an honor you received. This message brought to you by the Potosi R3 School District. Thirty-one seconds left to go in the third quarter. It's a barn burner at the Dragon's Lair. 35-25, St. Genevieve over Potosi. Potosi, though, just got that big 84-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. There's that surprise onside again, and St. Genevieve wasn't surprised by it at all. They'll fall on it. Big number 61, Aaron Steppy falls on it, and St. Genevieve again will be set up with great field position. 48-yard line, their own 48. You know, there's not really much of a surprise. Potosi's done that three times now so far in this game. But I'm saying Genevieve was ready for it from the get-go. I don't know if I faulted for it because, you know, for Potosi, you want to get the ball back. You haven't had much tr much success stopping St. Genevieve. But it sure doesn't help when you're setting them up at the 48 either. Here's St. Genevieve on offense. It's a pitch out to Gabe Meyer trying to set the edge of that offensive line. They cannot do it, and he is tackled right at the line of scrimmage. I believe it was Dallas Syme on the tackle. No game for Gabe Meyer. Number 77 defensively, Dennis Booker's had a, a pretty good night defensively for this Potosi team. He's gotten in the backfield, kind of done a little disrupting there. Booker came up with a sack earlier in the game. And that time he drove Meyer to the outside where Syme could bring him down. Second down and 10 from the 48-yard line. And Ma is Drury under some pressure and got away from the first contact. Then he was brought down hard. Ball popped out. The officials blow the whistle to say he was down, but man, crown collision of the game, not from player to player, from jury to the turf. He hit the ground hard on that. Yeah, he, he was slung down to the field. And lost five yards on the sack. And it is St. Genevieve football as they ruled he was down by contact on that. Third down and 15, ball back at the 44-yard line now. So Potosi's defense trying to make a stand, get him the ball back, 35-25. 8.20 left to go third quarter. Shotgun snap to Drury. Drury with a quick pass out to Palmer. Palmer's got it at the 50 to the 45 stretches for the 43-yard line. He needed the 42. He's going to be about a yard short, it looks like, to the naked eye here. Fourth down and short coming up, but I don't think Coach Dolzer is going to hesitate. I think they're going for it. Yeah, I look for I look for a Meyer coming out of the backfield possibly here. About a 13-yard reception. Fourth down and one. The ball at the 44-yard line, St. Genevieve. Shotgun formation for Drury. Palmer's lined up to the right. Two more receivers out left. Gilo and Neger. Brendan Dallas is in the slot to the right. So four receivers and a four-wide set for St. Gen. Gabe Myers the back. Fourth down and one. They're going to try a quick hitter out to Neger. It's going to take an open field tackle to get him, and they can't get it. He's got the first and then some up the sideline. Pushed out around the 30-yard line. It would be 19 yards if he was pushed out at the 30. Let's see where they spot it. Yeah, Dury saw something there when he lined up, and they checked it at the line and went to that little quick out play. Nice move there by that quarterback. And about the 34-yard line, so 15 yards on the catch for Nager on the quick hitter. First down and 10. St. Jen goes back to work. 34-yard line. 
and again with four wide. And that's what St. Jen can do to you. Potosi can do the same thing. They'll run that power formation all day long. Then they'll start spreading you out and passing it all over the place. Two good coaches going at it tonight. On first down, they'll do a play fake. Swing it out to Neger again. Same kind of quick hitter on the sideline. Wide receiver screen pass, and they get about six yards out of it. He's pushed out inside the 30 to about the 29. Next man up for St. Genevieve, though. They've got some hurt receivers. Clayton Neger stepped in, made three pretty good catches, and got some yards. Got five yards out of that one. Neger, Palmer, and Gilo are the prime receiving targets right now for the Dragons. Neger's actually had one go through his hands in the end zone for would have been a touch. That was, yeah, that was Palmer earlier in this ball game. Second down and five. Here's a carry to the right side. Brendan Dallas. Dallas is going to evade a tackle at the 28. And get a couple to the right side of the formation. Third down and short coming up. You know, we talked a lot about Dusty Weidman being a run uh, workhorse for Potosi all season long. But Brendan Dallas is already up to 20 carries in the game. 100 plus yards, three touchdowns on the ground. Third down and three from the 28. They'll split out one receiver to the left. Under center, it's Drury. Drury hands it off to Dallas and another big hole, and he's up to the 21-yard line before being driven down. Gain of about seven. First down, move the chains. That was a big hole that time by the St. Genevieve offensive line. It almost could have took the station van through that thing. And that's another group we need to give credit to because we haven't been giving them enough credit. Devin Brown, Dan Tarana, Kellen Stiegel, Kyle Nicholson, and Luke Himmerla along that offensive line have been opening up holes all day for Brennan Dallas. Anytime you have a running back that's going over 200 yards, that offensive line has done something all night long. First down and 10 from the 21-yard line. This looks to be a broken play, and Drury swallowed up in the backfield. Coming in there, Adam Wigan, the Potosi a linebacker, or defensive lineman, actually, he came unblocked. Looked like it was a run play, and the running backs didn't know that. The running back went to the right. Dury turned, or I'm sorry, the running back went to the left. Dury turned to the right. It was just a miscommunication there. Loss of five, second and 15 at the 26. Under center, Jury with one receiver, split left. Two backs in the backfield, counter play. Gabe Meyer in a big hole, and oh, he could have cut to the outside and got even more yardage. Gets pretty good yardage up to about the 16-yard line for a gain of 10. But did you see what I saw? If he cuts outside there, it's really green grass all the way. Plus, he had green jerseys out in front of him to the outside, and he cut it back inside where there's a lot of white jerseys. A lot of time, coaches won't want you to kick it back to the inside because there's going to be an overflow of defensive players going to the inside. Well-designed play. It was a counter that brought the Potosi defense to the other side of the formation, opening up that left side for Meyer to run. Now they'll run Brendan Dallas. Dallas will get a couple of yards to the right side and not much more. We've got about a fourth and two coming up on this play. This offense is going to stay out on the field. Why not? They've been converting them with pretty good efficiency tonight. Let's see what they want to run with on fourth and two from the 13-yard line. Under center, it's Drury. And Potosi, did they come across? Potosi may have just given St. Genevieve five yards. It's going to be a neutral zone infraction on the Trojans. Five free yards, first down St. Genevieve. And, you know, that's a penalty right there that just gets under Mark Casey's skin because he talked about they're going to have to play good, clean football tonight. And that's exactly right there, exactly what he was talking about not wanting to do. That'll give the Dragons a first down and goal from the eight-yard line. Now you're really going to have to muscle up and make a stop here if you're Potosi. Dallas and Meyer split backs in the backfield. Hand off right side. Dallas had the outside edge, cut it back inside for a nice gain of about five to six yards inside the five-yard line of Potosi. This is one of those ball possession, time of possession type of drives for St. Genevieve. They have really eaten up some clock and eaten up some yardage. First down and goal from the three after that five-yard carry by Brendan Dallas, or second down and goal from the three. Under center, Drury. Drury hands it off Dallas again, and he's through for the touchdown. That one was pretty easy. He just stood up and walked right in there for three yards. Brendan Dallas, how about his fourth? touchdown of the ball game. He's in Al Bundy territory now, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, he followed number 73 into the end zone there, Luke Hammerla. Hammerla. I can't even pronounce his last name. I apologize. And I'll tell you what, though. This offensive line is doing an absolute fabulous job for the St. Genevieve Dragon team. You could tell. And by the way, you did a good job on Hammerla's last name there. You, you got it right. But the offensive line really just wore down that Potosi defense on that drive. By the time they got it inside the 10-yard line, I mean, it was pretty much easy pickings from there. Well, 
so far tonight, this Potosi team has been a big play capability offense, but their defense has just been out there basically the whole game. The St. Genevieve offense has just run the clock down. Like you said, the possession has just been heavily on St. Genevieve's side. 41-25 as it stands right now. It's a 16-point game. If they hit this extra point, that'll make it a 17-point game, three-possession ball game. So this comes up pretty big here, and it's kind of been the uh, one of the differences in the game. Potosi hasn't been able to convert on uh, their two-point conversions, and it's cost them. And it could be costing them to the tune of a three-possession deficit here. Jury will hold an important extra point coming up for St. Jen to make it 17. There's the snap. It's good. The hold is there. The kick is up. It looks good. And it is 42 to 25. St. Genevieve continues to roll on offense. It was a 52 yard drive capped off by the three yard run by Brendan Dallas. And St. Jen leads it by 17. 503 to play in the third. We're back in 30 seconds on Kicking Country. J98, the boot. Kerry Buckley, Towing and Recovery in Park Hills at 431-2117 or 756-4563 offers 24-hour towing and wrecker service. Kerry Buckley and his employees pride themselves on providing quick and reliable towing, winching, lockouts, jump starts, and roadside service for cars and trucks, as well as towing and wreck recovery for tractor trailers. From big to small, Kerry Buckley, Towing and Recovery does it all. Call 431-2117 or 756-4563 for dependable 24-hour service from Kerry Buckley, Towing. Going. In case you're wondering the line on Brendan Dallas and you didn't get my uh, Al Bundy reference earlier in the ball game, 24 carries for Brendan Dallas, 149 yards and four touchdowns. And that's an unofficial total, but it gives you an idea that St. Genevieve has been pretty good on the ground game led by Brendan Dallas. The kickoff goes out of bounds. That'll set Potosi up with some good field position after a procedure penalty. You know, we were talking about the St. Genevieve team with the injuries. I'm, I'm just glimpsing the sideline. I see three young men on crutches and one in a knee brace. And that's all people that would have been starting and participating for the St. Genevieve squad. And you hate to see that, Glenn. Yeah, and, and that all that being said, They've put up 42 points on offense. Defensively, yeah, Potosi's been able to, to do some damage on them, but offensively, they really haven't missed a beat without some of their studs. <laughs> they, they have definitely moved the ball with quite efficiently tonight. Potosi down by 17. They'll bring that prolific offense back on the field. The way they've been playing, 17 points could be covered in just a few possessions, a few plays even by some of these bombs that Potosi's dropped on. And remember, Stiegel has 200 yards receiving tonight and an 84-yard touchdown reception as well Steve, uh, Caldwell or Cooley excuse me has found the end zone twice tonight once on a 35 yard bomb once on an 84 yard bomb here's a broken play and Aaron Vinson just gonna have to eat on it as he did sit on it I should say as he is brought down back at the 29 yard line once again it was a low snap and it was bobbled and that's been an issue tonight yeah. so far for Tosi it's been most of their snaps have been low for the most part, Vincent has shown some really soft hands, been able to corral those low snaps on that one, though. He had a hard time with it, and Potosi's going to lose about six yards. So second down at 16. Now they're back inside their own 30-yard line. Potosi will spread them out with four wide. Weidman's the back in the backfield. Aaron Vincent drops back. Pump fake. Now he goes deep, and he's going to underthrow it, and it's caught anyway. Yeah, it was a catch. Wow, he underthrew it. It was tipped by the St. Jen defender, Matt Drury, and then caught on the sideline. That's Dakota Galore. My goodness, what a play. What heads-up play to keep your feet in bounds as well. That ends up being an 18-yard catch by Dakota Galore. That wasn't a well-thrown ball by Aaron Vinson at all, but the defender, Drury, has tipped it up in the air. Galore came back for it, made a nice catch, kept his feet in bounds and came down with it. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Potosi continues to pass the ball well, even though they kind of got a break on that one as Drury could have had an interception. First down and 10 from their own 48. Man in motion. Vincent back to pass. He's in trouble. He's scrambling. Brought down on the sack. Zach Jamerson, number 75, the 6'1", 220-pound D lineman, had a beat on him and roped him in. And if you want to know exactly what that looked like, if you ever watched that movie, Rudy, although Jamerson's a lot bigger, but he was chasing he was chasing down that quarterback <laughs> just like Rudy right there. He just took you to the ground. At the end of the movie At when the he, end he the movie, gets a you know? sack. Yeah, you're right, actually. That's what it looked like, but Jamerson's probably got 100 pounds on Rudy. Second down. Jamerson, Jamerson. <laughs> 
Second down and 20 from the 38-yard line. Tosi going to have to get another chunky yardage back through the air. Man in motion. It's signed from left to right. Vincent takes the shotgun snap, rolls to his right. He's under pressure again, steps up, fires a dart in there, and this one is caught. Intercepted. But intercepted by St. Genevieve. How did he make that catch on the sideline? He come from nowhere. Ryan Carl, number 45. What a defensive play there. Potosi's now turned the ball over three times in the ballgame, two of them on interceptions thrown by Aaron Vincent. Vincent just tried to thread it in there, and Carl just come through and made a heck of a play from his linebacker's position. Vincent's thrown two picks, and Dakota Glor has thrown an interception on a uh, double reverse play that didn't pan out for Potosi. So St. Jen leading by 17, goes back to work. Here's a fake handoff to Dallas, then he gives it to Meyer. Meyer's up to the 41-yard line. The drive starts on Potosi's 47. to six-yard carry for Gabe Meyer. It's Gabe Meyer's ninth carry of the ball game. It's no doubt who the lead back is tonight, Brendan Dallas, but Gabe Meyer's a nice, uh, you know, combination runner to go along with him. One-two punch type of back. Nice compliment was the word I was looking for. Second down and four. Play action pass, and Drury's going to get blasted and overthrow his receiver, Meyer. And Drury's lucky to be still standing after that one because the hit came in from the blind side. He just got that pass off in time. And Drury's got a cramp right now in his calf. It looks like he's trying to work it out. A lot of cramps we're seeing here tonight. and This cooler weather, you know, we've went with some little warmer weather than earlier on this week. You know, they practiced in a little warmer weather and it cooled off here tonight, and that's where these cramps are coming from. Third down and four from the 41-yard line, St. Genevieve. Trying to go up big, already leading by 17. Here's Drury. Hand off right side. It's Brendan Dallas. Dallas with a little hesitation run. Waits for his hole to open up. Isn't going to quite get first down yardage on this. Two to three here, but it will be fourth and short, and I don't think we're going to see any hesitation from Coach Stolzer. No, they're inside the 40-yard line. They're definitely going to go for it here. Fourth down and about a yard. After that last carry, Dallas is up to 152 yards. Let's see if Drury doesn't just keep this on a sneak. And nope, he's going to hand it off. It's Dallas. He's got the first down. He's inside the 35-yard line to about the 34-yard line. If you need about four yards, Brendan Dallas is going to get you about four yards. If you need one, he's certainly going to get you that. And that's what the case was there. First down and 10, ball 34-yard line now of Potosi. And you can see Potosi's defense in that first half on a couple of drives, they were starting to bend but not break. Well, now they're getting broken because St. Genevieve is really taking it at him. Here's the under center snap, and it goes to Jury. He hands it off to Brendan Dallas. And Dallas, again, that initial point of attack on that offensive line, so good, opens up the hole for him right away. The secondary comes up and closes it, but he gets it up inside the 30-yard line. To about the 29 for a gain of five. That misdirection handoff fake to Meyer and turn right around and go back to Dallas. Had that defense a little confused. Second and five from the 29. St. Genevieve now just taking some time off that clock. We're under two minutes to play in the third quarter. Jury will come up under center. Palmer's the receiver outright. There's the snap. Pitches it to Meyer this time. Meyer had the edge taken away from him, so he cuts it up inside. He's up to the 25, maybe the 26-yard line. Going to be third and short coming up here after about a three-yard carry by Gabe. Third down and about two. St. Jen offense just trying to stay on the field. Keep the ball away from Aaron Vincent. These Potosi deadly receivers. St. Genevieve's got a deadly running attack, and they have really flexed that muscle tonight. This is a team that only lost by eight to Maplewood last week. They were down 23 to nothing to Maplewood at halftime, came back and made that a ball game. Here they are now up by 17. On Potosi. Here's a handoff right side. Ooh, this time Dallas is going to go backwards. He Meyer. ran into Gabe, or he ran into uh, Gabe Meyer there. And Myers looks like he's slow to try to get up off the ground. Dallas goes for a loss of one on that one. He hadn't lost a yard since his first carry of the ball game. And Meyer's still on the ground. You think that was a case where he got kind of rolled up on from behind by Dallas there? I think so. Fourth down coming up and about three yards to go. They'll go intend. 
to Gabe Meyer on the field as he lies on his back right now, and we'll hope he's okay. We've seen a lot of injuries tonight on the St. Genevieve side of things. We want to thank Potosi Basement and Foundations in Potosi, Lord Custom Cabinets in St. Genevieve, Norman Crumpecker Bail Bonds in Potosi, State Representative Joe Fallert in St. Gen, Dean Adams Auto Sales in Potosi, JTB Construction LLC in St. Genevieve for sponsoring our broadcast tonight. 42-25 to 25 is our score. 54 seconds left to go in the third quarter. St. Genevieve now is starting to open up a bigger lead in this game, Dennis. And Potosi's offense, you know, I don't want to say they're slowing down, but again, they're not seeing the field enough. No, they're not. They're just not on the field. I mean, and, and what kids are on the field, they're probably playing both ways about right now, and they're just tired. I mean, because, I mean, it's been a slugfest. Anytime you've got a running back that just keeps pounding the ball at you and pounding at you, you're going to wear down. You know, I look at this St. Genevieve squad, and um, you know, this Potosi team has passed the ball on them very effectively. And I look at the stats from last week, you know, Maplewood threw up 328 yards passing against this St. Genevieve team. And, you know, that's really kind of what I think hurt them last week. But, you know, you look at the penalty factor last week alone, Maplewood had 24 penalties for 241 yards. St. Genevieve only had, uh, what, five for 25.5 yards. I mean, and here tonight, there's not been very many penalties against this St. Genevieve I don't squad. think there's been any. And, uh, you know, they've been playing good, clean football, and that's what is a good key factor here for this team. Actually, I take that back. The illegal procedure on the kickoff was the only penalty that I can recall for St. Genevieve trying to keep track. Potosi's losing the, the penalty battle 4-1 to one and the turnover battle 3-1. to one. St. Genevieve's over tur- only turnover was at the end of the half there when they're just frantically trying to get a play in. They pitch a ball out that ends up being a fumble, but it's the end of the half. Really no harm done at that point. Potosi's done three interceptions this game, and as good as Aaron Vincent's been, he's tried to fit a few passes in there that really had no business being placed where they were and uh, got picked off a couple of times. And, and Dakota Glore did the same. And that one by Glore, that, sh- that shouldn't have, he should have just tucked that ball and ran it out of bounds or something. He should have never even thrown it. I mean, that play was a, a bad from the start. So Meyer tried to get up, but then he set him right back down. So. This was a game in which Jacob Rowe did not get a start for St. Genevieve. He was banged up last week against Maplewood. Tyson Roth did not get the start, but he came into the ball game once Potosi started passing the ball over the all over the place. Now that they've got a 17-point lead, I think he's getting a little bit more rest. Brendan Dallas was shaken up for a little while, but he returned, and he's played well. Adam Schwint has left this game, and right now Gabe Myers on the – ground trying to get the strength up to come off the field he will be helped off once they finally get him ready to go they've got him on his feet now it's just a matter of getting him off the field you know you hate that for St. Jim to have so many players go down you know in a matter of two weeks like this his training staff's been busy tonight for the St. Genevieve Dragon team so Myers coming off mostly under his own power he's got one trainer to his side holding arm and a big cheer for the St. Jen crowd as he comes off. We've got a fourth down and three for the St. Jen Dragons. They're trying to extend on a 17-point lead over Potosi with 54 seconds left in this third quarter, 42-25 to the score. St. Jen's defense gets a bit of a breather right there, so a big fourth and three coming up. I said Jay Potosi's defense gets a big breather right there. A fourth and three coming up. Maybe they can muster up enough to get a stop and get their offense back on the field finally. Here comes St. Jen. They're going to bring Ryan Carl the back of the backfield and spread out the Potosi defense. And here's the shotgun snap and has a man, but oh, it's bobbled and intercepted. Potosi has the pick, and here comes the run back, and he's brought down at about 38-yard line. That's Cody Riggs with the interception. That pass was a little bit behind the intended target, batted up in the air, and a pick by Cody Riggs. Riggs of the sophomore safety making the play. St. Genevieve turns it over for just the second time in this game. Matt Drury throws his first interception. That's been one bright spot here for this Potosi defense tonight. But even that, it's fourth down, so it's either, you know, if it's incomplete there, it's still a turnover. But for Potosi, that run back gives them pretty good field position at the 38-yard line. Now you got to make something happen. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Trojans back on offense. They'll go four wide with a one back. In the backfield, that's Dusty Weidman. Here's the shotgun snap. They're going to pass it again. Quick hitter underneath it dropped. Incomplete pass. Second down and 10 coming up. You know, we talked about Weidman. Need, they need to get that man in the ball game. I mean, he's he stepped up big defensively, but he's a, he's too good of an athlete to not be a part of this offense. And, 
He's just been a non-factor. Yeah, still just the eight carries, has not carried the ball once in the second half yet. You're down by 17 points, but you still got the whole fourth quarter and a couple of snaps left here in this third quarter. You can still run the football with Dusty Weidman. I'm a little bit surprised to see that they haven't really given him the ball much. I think what they're doing here is keeping him in the backfield for a little bit of extra protection for the quarterback. Second down and 10 from the 38. They'll go to the I formation here, and Vincent's going to hand it off uh, straight up the middle on the fullback carry. And not a whole lot there. St. John's defense is ready for it. Third down. Caleb Stevens getting the carry. And he only got a yard right up the gut. So they do run it for the first time in the second half, and it goes to the fullback, Caleb Stevens. Third down and nine from the 39. Let's see if Potosi wants to get one more playoff before the end of the quarter. Five seconds, down to four from the shotgun. Vincent, two seconds, one, and that's it. They'll take it to the fourth quarter. It's a 42-25 to lead now for St. Genevieve over Potosi, and we have played three. We've got an update ready from Luke Turnbow from Perryville on that St. Vincent Herculaneum game. Let's check it out. Well, it's the Dustin Johnson show for the Herculaneum Black Hats. He has just scored his third touchdown of the game. Pretty much put this game close to being out of reach. Right now, Herculaneum leads the St. Vincent Indians 19-6. to Their last score is 60-yard drive at the 331 mark of the fourth quarter. They went for two. It didn't uh, pan out for the Black Hats. And Johnson had a big 12-yard run on that drive. He's carried the ball for about 45 times for 224 yards in this football game. St. Vincent has the ball, 3.28 to go. Herky 19, St. Vincent 6 here in Perryville. Need it, want it, rent it, own it. Come to show me rent to own. Hi, I'm Gary Romine, owner of Show Me Rent Own. If you can hear this ad, then there's a Show Me Rent to Own location near you. Want a new laptop or big screen TV? Shop Show Me Rent to Own. Need a new washer and dryer? Shop Show Me Rent to Own. We have what you want and need. Want it? Need it? Rent it? Own it? Show Me Rent to Own. A show you rental company of the Show Me State. We've got a third down and nine for the Potosi Trojans. They trail 42 to 25. They'll change side to the field as we start fourth quarter. It's Aaron Benson from the shotgun. Three receivers lined up to the right side of the formation. Oh, oh snap again. Benson's going to pick it up. He's on the run, scrambling for his life, and still going. Spins out of a tackle. Fires one deep. Jump ball incomplete. But he did a great job just to get away from the rush after a terrible snap. Man, he sure prolonged that play, but nothing could happen from it. Boy, he's, they are very lucky he wasn't tackled and sacked back by the 20-yard line. He did everything in his power just to get away, and how he did was just amazing. We've got a final score from the KREI game of the week. Park Hill Central beats Maplewood 7 to nothing. How about a defensive game there? And just to shut out Maplewood is uh, an accomplishment in itself. You know, what Corey Swice did there was just a time of possession game, and he just kept that offense from Maplewood off the field and just, just ground and pound it with those two running backs that they have there in Central. And we'll welcome in that audience that was listening to that Park Hill Central game on AM800 KREI. We've got a 42-25 ball game at St. Genevieve on top of Potosi. It's been an offensive shootout, but St. Gen's offense has just been a little bit more prolific. We've got a Potosi punt coming here. Dakota Glore is going to boot one deep. Brendan Dallas waits for it at the 25. He'll let it roll. And it'll go out about the 19-yard line where Potosi will down it. So St. Jen's offense takes the field. 11:39 left to go in the fourth quarter, up 42 to 25. Just too much Brendan Dallas in this one today, Dennis. Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, this St. Genevieve team has just taken over, and just the the, the running game just wears down the defensive squad. I mean, it's. Unlike any other, I mean, if you can have a spread team out there and just pass the ball all over the field, and you think because they run a ton with the receivers, they'd be tired, but just the physical pounding that you get from a running back, is it just wears you out. Brennan Dallas has carried the ball 28 times for 150 plus yards and four touchdowns. Here's a pitch out to guess who? Brendan Dallas. He'll take it to the right side of the formation, pick up about three to four yards, and St. Genevieve will try to keep milking that clock and melt it away, Dennis. Like butter in a microwave. Second down coming up and about seven yards after a three-yard carry from Brendan Dallas. He's, he'll go for three. He'll go for four. Then he'll break off a 20-yard gainer, 29-yard gainer. 
He's been awesome tonight, and he's probably going to be the player of the game. If you're just joining us, he hasn't only done it on the ground with his four touchdowns. He's also had a big 70-yard punt return that set up one of his touchdowns. He's also had two picks on defense, and I don't think there's any doubt if St. Genevieve holds on to win it that the uh, Unico Bank player of the game will be burned in Dallas in this one. <laughs> yeah, that's without a doubt that young man is on his way to clinching that that title. Second down and seven, 23-yard line. St. Genevieve is huddled up. They'll take as much time as they can. So, again, final score, 7 nothing. It was Central over Maplewood in a defensive game. On AM 1400, KJF in the fourth quarter, Festus leads DeSoto 34 to nothing. Second down and seven from the 23. I formation here for St. Gen. Here's a pitch out to Dallas. Dallas is a hesitant runner, patient runner, I should say. And then a face mask on the end of this play as he's brought down for a loss. It should be a face mask, I think, as the flag comes in from the sideline. And we'll see if they give St. Genevieve the personal foul first down. Potosi would have the penalty go against them first down St. Gen, if it is indeed a penalty on Potosi for a face mask, and it is. That'll be a personal foul first down St. Gen with 10.43 to play. And you're starting to see this Potosi team, they just looking a little defeated right now. You know, you have a few people with their hands on their hips and they're just their heads are kind of sagging a little bit. But they really I mean, really offensively, they have nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, they've come in, they put points on the board against a, a, a good defensive St. Genevieve team. They rolled out a five yard face mask and not the personal foul face mask, so it's not first down, second down and short for the St. Gen Dragons. They'll call it about two yards to go. St. Genevieve. Standing at the line, waiting for the play clock to run down. We do want to welcome in another new audience as the KJF game of the week has come to an end with Festus winning 34 to nothing. So welcome in. It's a 42 to 25 lead for St. Jen over Potosi. Here's a handoff to Dallas. He needed two yards to get the first down. Looked like he got it up to the 30-yard line. Got exactly what he needed to move the chains. First down and 10. So you're listening to high school football on three different radio stations tonight. Well, you're listening to it on one of them, but we're broadcasting on three. KTJJ, FM, Farmington Festus, Crystal City, St. Genevieve, Potosi, AM 800, KRI, Farmington Park Hills, Deloge, and AM 1400, KJFF, Festus, Crystal City, Herculaneum. First down and 10 from the 30, St. Genevieve goes into milk the clock mode as Drury will step up under center from I formation. He's got a receiver out to the right. Faked handoff to the fullback, and he's going to run it to the right. Had that option, but instead keeps it himself, and he is blasted at the 30-yard line. No gain on the carry. Another crown collision collision of the game. We've had a few of those tonight. Well, that was a big hit. And these white jerseys with the yellow numbers are just so hard to read sometimes. It's hard to see the number of that young man that made that play. I believe Dalton Syme on that one, which is a name we've called tonight. Dalton and Dallas Syme have both had some big nights tonight, defensively and offensively, but just wasn't enough to beat St. Genevieve tonight. It's looking like St. Gen's going to go to 3-1 and one and get another conference win, or the first conference win, actually. No gain on that last carry by Jury, so second down and 10 from the 30-yard line. We'd like to thank a few sponsors as well, like Potosi Lumber Company, Poli Ready Mix, Potosi BP Station and Potosi R3 Schools all in Potosi. Carrying the ball is Brendan Dallas, but he has nowhere to go. And maybe he's starting to wear down a little bit, too. Now that St. Genevieve has a big lead, he hasn't had the prolific carries like we saw in the first half and that first possession out of the first half. Lost about a half yard on that carry to Brendan Dallas. He's had three carries that have gone backwards. Everything else has been positive for him, including four touchdowns tonight. That's got to give you some confidence going into the next few games, knowing that you can score four touchdowns in one game. That's, that's got to give a team and a player all kinds of confidence to go further in this year. So I had the Al Bundy reference earlier. He was always known for his big four-touchdown performance for his high school in Chicago. Here's the shotgun or the uh, deep pass, and they're going to go to Clayton Gilo. How about that on a play fake on third and 11? And Gilo makes the catch for a big first down for St. Genevieve. Clayton Gilo, that was his first grab of the ball game. Once again, Dre just lays it right in place where his, only his receiver can come down with that ball. So about 40 yards on that pass and a catch. But anyway, what I was getting at, Dennis, is do you remember what uh, high school Al Bundy went to when he got his four touchdowns? I do not. You're talking to a big married with children fan here. It'd be Polk High School. 
<laughs> Do you watch a lot of Married with Children? I haven't watched that in a long time. <laughs> I still you pulled watch. out the Married with Children reference. I'm pulling out the Rudy reference. You know? <laughs> well, we got a blowout ball game. Well, I, I, I say blowout. It's really not that bad. Three scores right now. Here's a handoff to the right side. Brendan Dallas is going to pick up 10 yards, make it 15 yards to the right side. Off right tackle, and Brendan Dallas keeps pounding the football. Brendan Dallas is thinking of five touchdowns for tonight. He's, he's I'm thinking he's thinking five. Well, just sounds a little better. Yeah. Break that out, Bundy record. How about that? Yeah. So it's first down and 10 from the 22-yard line. Give him 17 yards on that last carry for Brendan Dallas. He's looking for the 200-yard mark and four touchdowns. Do you have Brendan Dallas on your fantasy team? <laughs> I might I might try to pick him up off the waivers. Yeah, he's going to be a hot waiver wire pickup after this week. First down and 10 from the 22-yard line. Another one who I'm going to pick up is uh, Mr. Cooley from Potosi. Austin Cooley, a 200-yard performance just in the first half tonight. He just hasn't been on the field enough to do much in the second half. Hand off right side. It goes to Brennan Dallas. He's going to get over 30 carries tonight, Dennis. I don't know if any of these guys are going to be on the waiver wire. They're probably already taken. <laughs> You know, if you're doing a high school fantasy football league, I'm sure these guys were all drafted and drafted high. Here's a two-yard carry for Dallas, and it's second down and about eight for St. Jen at the 20-yard line. Leading 42 to 25. It was a shootout in the first half. Potosi just unable to get their offense on the field in the second half. St. Genevieve has controlled the ball, controlled the clock, and controlled the scoring to the tune of a 17-point lead. They've got Palmer split out wide left, eye formation again at St. Genevieve. They're well coached. They're going to take that clock all the way down to about three seconds or so before they snap it. Yeah, that one was at five seconds before the snap, and then the handoff, and going backwards on the carry is Dallas. Lost about a yard. He's taken one step back and then about 17 yards forward on this drive. He's carried the ball now 29 times. He's up close to 200 yards rushing. You know, coming into this game, we definitely thought that, that the uh, Potosi running back, Weidman, was going to be the 30-carry running back tonight, and it's been the complete opposite. Weidman still hasn't had a carry in the second half. Unbelievable. Eight carries for Weidman. He's not used to only having that many touches. He's made some plays on defense tonight from his linebacker spot, but offensively, I'm sure he was a little bit frustrated tonight. He hasn't even touched the ball offensively in the second half. Third down and eight from the 20-yard line. Here's Drury on a play fake, rolling out to his left. He's going to tuck it and try to run. Gets a big block from Carl, and he's up the sideline, but no gain at the 20-yard line. And one of those D linemen got blindsided by Ryan Carl and was John Malugin, who was just upended by a blindside block. No gain on the run by Drury, but a big hit. That's one that those running backs just love to see. They see that big boy coming across with his head turned, and they're like, oh. I get to clean up a big guy. <laughs> you ever got your uh, clock clean like that coming across? I'll never admit it. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you did. Fourth down and eight. Now for St. Jen from the 20-yard line. Five minutes and 25 seconds left to play in this ball game. St. Genevieve in complete control now as Potosi is going to try to make a fourth down stop and get their offense back on the field. But it seems like we've been saying it this whole drive. St. Jen always finds a way to convert. Here's the shotgun snap. Jury, he's going to fire over the middle. Has Nigger. He makes the catch at the five, and he's down to the four-yard line. 16 yards on the reception. How about that tight spiral, putting it right on the number, the number nine there for Clayton Nigger. Beautiful pass once again. I mean, his he's he's leading this offense. I mean, he's taking full advantage of his, his role here as quarterback, and he's done an excellent job. It doesn't seem like he's been afraid to take a back seat to Brendan Dallas, but step up and make the big plays when he's needed. He's had a touchdown pass tonight that went 29 yards to Schwent. He's also ran the ball pretty effectively tonight, 11 carries, and he's just doing what he needs to do. That's the thing about the St. Jim squad. There's so many weapons. I mean, it could be pick your poison at any night. First down and goal from the four-yard line. Here's the handoff. Ryan Carl, they're trying to get him in the end zone. Oh, the ball came out late. They signal touchdown as he pushes across the goal line. St. Genevieve does get the score. Ryan Carl takes it in from four yards out, and St. Genevieve stretches the lead 48-25. His first carry of the game goes four yards for the score. 4.55 left to go in the half, and Clayton Nager, who has not missed an extra point, Yet tonight, he's going to try to stay perfect. It'll be seven for seven if he knocks it through. That was another thing Potosi was just unable to get 
two-point conversions across tonight. When you have a good place kicker that can give you a guaranteed point, that's always a positive. Here's the snap. Here's the kick. This one looks up and to the right, but, ooh, it just clears the inside of the right upright, and it's good. Neger 7 for 7. It's 49-25. St. Genevieve, all Dragons in the second half. 4.55 to play, and we are going to be back in one minute on Regional Radio. Where you always get a sweet deal. Get 0% APR up to 60 months on select 2012 models or rebates up to and exceeding $7,000 right now at Ruth or Ford at the Herculaneum exit. Hi, this is Doug Jr. with Jefferson County's best lineup of new Fords and certified pre-owned. Right now, at Ruther Ford, we have a new stable of 2013 Mustangs, plus new 2013 Escapes, and the new 2013 Fusions are on the way. Plus, just in at Ruther Ford is the new 2013 Focus ST with the all-new 2-liter EcoBoost engine. Plus, our recent summer savings produced a terrific selection of pre-owned vehicles as well. Remember, Ruther Ford is proud to be tops in the region in customer satisfaction. We are Ruther Ford, I-55 at the Herculaneum Auto Mall exit. Ruther Ford, Ruther.com. Austin Cooley on the kickoff return brings it back to the 27-yard line of Potosi and the Trojans take over with 4.47 left to go in the fourth quarter, trailing 49-25. All the final scores have come in. We'll get you a list of those as we roll through the final minutes of this ball game, a game in which St. Genevieve is going to come out and win it. But it was a 34-0 Festus win over to Soto on AM 1400 KJF. Central beat Maplewood 7-0 on AM 800 KREI. And the update game on J98, Herculaneum defeats St. Vincent 19-6 tonight. North County over Hillsborough 26-20. That was last checked in the fourth quarter. Here's Vincent scrambling for his life on a shotgun pass, and he's going to get the edge trying to run for it. He's up to the 25-yard line and about the 27-yard line. No gain on the carry for Aaron Vincent before he's ran out of bounds. You know, Glenn, that loss to Maplewood kind of threw the, everything in the tailspin in this uh, conference so far with, with uh, St. Genevieve picking up this win. Potosi picking up the loss. And Central is going to be now Frettertown 2-0. With the win. Central will be 2-0 in the conference. You're right, Frettertown beat Perryville 47-7 to final score there. So Central is going to be leading the conference now in the white division. They'll go to 3-1 and one on the year. So second down and 10 for Potosi. Other scores... It was Cuba over Windsor, 26-21. to That's a final. Here's Vincent dropping back to pass. Play breaks down around him. He's got green jerseys all around. He's going to scramble for it, and he's going to be still going at the 30-yard line, but finally roped down at the 32, and a flag comes in late. We'll check that in just a second as we get you some more scores. Jefferson on their homecoming, beating St. Pius 42-7 to in the third quarter. Grandview beats Missouri Military Academy 49-6. to It was Webster Groves over Seckman 47-14. to And those are the scores we have as of right now. And that Jefferson game, would that be Jefferson's first win of the season? Yes, it would. For a um, win or homecoming On their game. homecoming. They're, they've only played three. They had the one that was rained out. And I know they've came close to winning the first game. And then mm-hmm. and last week they almost beat Herculaneum. So they've, they've had a couple of close calls. They finally get one in, uh, in dominating fashion over St. Pius. In their homecoming game, that's got to make you feel nice. All right. Second down and 15. From the 22-yard line for Potosi after the penalty. Cost him about 10 yards. I think it was a hold on that last one for the Trojans. Here's Vincent dropping back to pass. And again, the defensive ends are coming around those tackles and making some plays. He's brought down hard again. St. Genevieve gets the sack. 69 on the tackle. And that'd be Derek James, the 5'10 junior for St. Gen. Dragons are getting some backups in the ballgame now. Also coming in, Wyatt Flig, and coming off is Luke Hemmerla. Luke Hemmerla played good on defense tonight. Got the Rudy sack. Yes, he did. We might have to give that an award, the Rudy sack. Rudy sack of the game. I don't know if they'll be able to lift him up off the ground and carry him off the field. He's a pretty <laughs> good-sized boy. Fourth down. Third down and 18 to go. Scoreboard has fourth down, but the 
the sticks have third down, and Vincent drops back to pass. He's going to just chuck one up deep. He's looking for Glore, and Glore has it at the 50, to the 40, up the sideline to the 30, flashing the speed to the 10. Touchdown on third and 18 from the 19. How about 81 yards to pay dirt for Dakota Glore? That big strike capability of this Potosi Trojan team is what's kept them in this game. You know what that reminded me of? And I know it's a whole different level, but 1999 Super Bowl, Kurt Warner to Isaac Bruce down the sideline. It was almost exactly the same type of play. Just the goer out there for Dakota Glor. Hit him perfectly in stride, put it just over the defender's hand. Touchdown, Potosi. Although they're not likely to win this game, man, what a game for Aaron Vincent. That passing attack for this Potosi Trojan team is just really something to keep your eye on for the rest of the season. Touchdown, Potosi makes it 49-31. We're going to get a timeout. Trojans want to talk about it before this extra point with 2.36 left to go. We'll take a timeout right along with them. 49-31, St. Genevieve. We're back in 30 seconds on Regional Radio. Are you one of these kinds of dads? When the kids came along, did you promise yourself, I never want to look back and wish I'd spent less time at the office? Then you should get to know Shelter Insurance. We help people who plan their lives around their families by offering life insurance that protects soccer daughters, shortstops, violinists, good students, wives, and so much more. To find out more, visit our website, shelterinsurance.com. Seek shelter today. For all your insurance needs, see Jim Ropke, your shelter insurance agent in St. Genevieve. Well, Aaron Vinson, 369 yards and four touchdowns unofficially in this ballgame. Dakota Glore has two of them. Austin Cooley has two of them. And Vinson has been just lighting it up through the air tonight, but not a whole lot in the way of a rushing attack for Potosi. And you'd have to think if they had that ground game, St. Jen's offense wouldn't have been on the field for as long as it was tonight. Oh, yeah, you're you're definitely right there. I'll tell you, this passing attack is just – I wasn't expecting it. I, I, I wasn't, wasn't not this good no, anyway. I was no. expecting a lot more balance from Potosi, but uh, they've shown they can certainly pass the ball. So here's a shotgun snap. Potosi wants to go for two. They'll fire it quickly into the end zone. Cooley's got it for the two. Had the position on his man, and Potosi makes it 49-33. to 33. It's a 16-point game, two possessions if you can get – both the uh, two-point conversions with 2.36 left to go. So you get an onside kick here, and with their big play capability, who knows, maybe you can make a run at a comeback in this one. And that's what that's really what it's been. I mean, their offense tonight for Potosi has just been a big strike. You know, they haven't really sustained any type of really a drive. It's just been the big strike capability. 49-33, two minutes, 36 seconds left to go. St. Genevieve is set to return, most likely going get to get an onside kick for Potosi. Let's run down some scores while we wait. On AM 800 KRI, Central knocked off Maplewood. Final score, 7 to nothing. It was Festus over to Soto, 34 to nothing on AM 1400 KGF. Both of those audiences have joined us on G98. It was Herculaneum defeating St. Vincent in the update game on J98 tonight, 19-6. to By the way, those updates brought to you by Ruther Ford and Herculaneum, Gebhardt's Auto Repair in Perryville, Warner Auto Body in Perryville, and Perryville Pumpkin Farm in Perryville. Perryville would lose tonight, 47-7 to on Fredertown's homecoming. North County beats Hillsboro, 26-20, so the Raiders have two straight wins. Also, Cuba over Windsor, 26-21. Valley Catholic shuts out Crystal City, 55-0. Jefferson beats St. Pius, 42-7 on Jefferson's homecoming. It was Grandview over Missouri Military Academy, 49-6. On the onside kick, here we go, and it's not going to go 10 yards. It rolls backwards and back to the 40. Somebody better fall on this for Potosi, or St. Jen's going to pick it up and run it for a touchdown. St. Genevieve did fall on it. Yeah, St. Jen fell on it eventually. And he was only in the game for maybe three plays, but give it to Tyson Roth, number 28. Yep. Makes a special teams play to fall on it for St. Jen. But, you know, Potosi was like, uh, it's not going to go 10 yards. Let's just let it go. And then, you know, if, if they stay away from that ball and St. Jen picks it up, they can advance it for the touchdown. So they're lucky Roth just fell on it instead of picking, out, picking it up for six. You know, Glenn, that. Last sponsor, that Perryville Pumpkin. I want you to say that 50 times straight in a row as fast as you can. Perryville Pumpkin Farm in Perryville. <laughs> You're right. It's not an easy one. First down and 10 from the 35-yard line for St. Jen. They've got the backups in on offense now, or do they? 
Actually, no, mostly the same guys. Brendan Dallas, Ryan Carl, the backs in the backfield. Gabe Meyer left this game due to injury, which is one thing we're going to have to ask Coach Stolzer about tonight. A lot of injuries coming out of this ball game. Here's a handoff. Brendan Dallas, he runs it to the right side. He's up inside the 30-yard line and picks up about six yards on the carry. You know, while we got some downtime, Dennis, I think we can go ahead and go ahead and crown it for the Unico Bank player of the game. It's going to have to be Brendan Dallas with nearly 200 yards rushing and four touchdowns on 31 carries. That's just so far in this game. Yeah, that's without a doubt. That's the player of the game for sure. Plenty of big drives in this ball game. All of them brought to you by ProCare Automotive in Bonterre. Most of those drives have been long drawn out drives dominated by the run from the St. Genevieve offense when Potosi scores they score quick here's Drury handing it off right side Brendan Dallas has stood up he'll be brought down back at the 29 yard line for a loss of one yeah, just like you said last time it's 17 one direction one yard back I'll tell you what don't don't forget about that young man he's going to take off here on this next play I bet and run to the house St. Genevieve's first drive of the game went 53 yards, capped off by a 29-yard touchdown run by Brendan Dallas. And from there, that was the kind of the straw that broke the camel's back that set St. Genevieve's offense just on fire for this ball game. So the first drive for St. Genevieve, the big drive of the game, brought to you by ProCare Automotive in Bonterre. Third down and five from the 30. I for Mason for St. Genevieve, down to a minute left to play. Here's the handoff. And it goes to Dallas. And they gave it to Dallas again, but he lost a yard again. And he can't go anywhere on the carry. Fourth down coming up. My prediction didn't come through, but I tell you what, he's, he's had a heck of a night anyhow. That's for sure. Down to 45 seconds and counting left to go. Stay tuned for end zone. As soon as the final whistle was blown here, we'll send it to the studio with Tom Lively and company. We'll talk to all the area coaches. Some big games tonight, including this one. 49-33, St. Genevieve with the lead over Potosi in the final 30 seconds of the ball game. Time for one more snap, and they'll bring the backups in to snap this final football. Get some varsity experience, even if it is just a, a kneel down or a quick handoff. And the St. Gen backups come in, and then a flag comes with 12 seconds left to go, and you couldn't just eat that flag in the final 12 seconds of the ballgame. Did you really have to throw it? <laughs> It'll go against the St. Jen for a delay a game. I'll just let them have the extra couple of seconds. It was a late substitution in there for the backups coming in. So with 12 seconds on the clock now, they'll wind the clock, 49-33. Final play of the ball game. Here's the shotgun snap, fake handoff, and he's going to take it up the middle and not go anywhere. This was the backup. And he's such a backup that his number's not even on the roster. Number 31 got the snap and looks like he's even wearing a different colored jersey like it's a JV jersey up there. So, sorry, I couldn't give you your name recognition, buddy, but uh, he lost a couple of yards on the play. And that is – actually, that's not going to be it. The clock stopped at seven seconds on a turnover on down. So, Potosi's going to get one more play. Oh, Glenn. <laughs> Anyhow. First down and 10 from You know, I've, I've got to give – uh, credit where credit's due tonight to this offensive line from St. Genevieve. I mean, anytime you could let a running back go over 200 yards, close to 200 yards, that offensive front's done its job, and they've done an excellent job. Seven seconds left for Potosi after the turnover on downs. Here's the shotgun snap. It goes to Vincent. Vincent's going to drop straight back and pump fake. He's going to look to step up and launch one deep down the right sideline and has Glore. Glore makes a nice catch, a bobbly catch, and it's not Glore. It's rather Cooley making the catch at the 30 and to the final whistle. Potosi goes down, chucking the football all over the place. That Cooley's going to be someone to watch out for. You definitely will hear his name. In the now, next year. That was about a 30-yard catch for Cooley to end his ball game. He ends up with 230 yards receiving through the air. But once again, the story in this ball game, other than Cooley, Brendan Dallas with a huge, huge ball game with four touchdowns on the ground. He's our Unico Bank player of the game. The St. Genevieve wins it 49-33 to over Potosi in one heck of a shootout. Potosi goes down swinging, but they fall to the Mighty Dragons. Any final thoughts to this before we send it back? For end zone. I tell you, I was thoroughly impressed with what I saw offensively for Potosi. It's just a, a little bit more balanced, and I think you're going to see him work out later on in the year. Excellent job by the St. Genevieve team. 
to come through here tonight and pick up the win. Final score, 49-33. St. Genevieve gets the win.